How's everybody doing out there? What's really? Everything is. No, hold up. No. No. Is Joe Biden. Yeah. No. Well, we uh, that. Microphone check. One, two. What is this? Welcome to the Joe Budden Podcast, episode 211. I am your host, Joe Budden, here with a few of my nearest and dearest friends. I don't know if that's the case anymore. I mean, it was some niggas at school. <laughs> Damn. I mean, it was some we, niggas we talk twice a week. We don't really chop it up. We don't talk about nothing. Because we have two episodes a week now. Yeah, we you, you, have a tw- you have your days are 25 8. So you don't, uh, have, time for, <laughs> you don't have time for us. You know, yeah. I kind of felt sin when she was going with that. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm going to take my hat off and this jacket. Yeah, now. With, with another kinda, turtleneck under it. No, I'm going to keep jacking on. Yeah, that <laughs> turtleneck sleeveless. That means that shirt must be something happening. Sleeveless happen. turtleneck. I'm a fight park. I'm a fight park. I saw okay. the sleeve. A sleeveless turtleneck. Oh, that's my gross. God. I'm not wearing that's a sleeveless really turtleneck. That's nasty. Uh, welcome to. Can I do a podcast? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> welcome to the Joe Bud. I did that already. Uh, episode 211. I'm here with some niggas. It's all right. Parks, <laughs> Park Small, Erickson, Rory, and Savon. What's your nigga's names? <laughs> Where y'all from? Yeah, what's good with y'all? Uh, how's everybody feeling, gentlemen? I'm feeling good, good, man. Good, good, good. Real good. Very it's a, good. It's a lot of goods. Yeah, I'm good, man. What well, you got? Had, from- a, had an eventful weekend? No, not really. It was chill. I'm just, I'm just good in, as far as you know the shit that's going on, man. I'm just trying to stay away from all of that. So. I'm good with them myself. What's going well, on? You came to the wrong podcast, buddy. <laughs> no, I know we got We're about to dive right no, 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 in no. again. For sure, but that's why I had to kind of stay away from that shit. And again. let me just say, uh, oh man, I hope this is our last serious podcast. <laughs> yeah. At least for a little while. I didn't want to start the year this serious. Well. Like two in a row on this series? Yeah. So, like, Jesus, when can we be immature? <laughs> Can't. Yeah, hey, when, it's we, over? when we have a responsibility, yeah. that's trash. I don't want to have a responsibility. These fucking, these fucking new age kids is trying to end their maturity. If yeah. they don't get the fuck out of here, yeah. that's not right. That's, no. that's definitely not right. But. Um, shout out to <laughs> shout out to our Spotify listenership, our YouTube viewership. I want to shout out to our mature and immature audiences. I want to shout out to the college kids, shout out to the employed and unemployed people, shout out to the stay-at-home mom and dads, shout out to, uh, this is a new one, the gamer community has, oh. has chimed in and said, hey man. Show some respect. <laughs> yeah. Yo, listen. You're leaving us out, man. Wow. So They got money over there. That Sha- gaming shit. Yeah, games ain't cheap. <laughs> no, you know, no, the gamer community has money. I just have never been smart enough to know how to tap into it. Uh, while looking genuine because I don't play games. Get anymore. a game. We gotta. We gotta I don't play games. Don't play no games. I don't play games, and I don't encourage my son who's trying to make music to play games. If you're trying to play, mu- if you're trying to make music, that's fair. So, well, a lot of songs which I, I've heard are now breaking on like video games, like those Twitch shits. Yeah. Like that's getting mad views on DSPs now. If you DSPs. break a song on Rory, Rory, video games, Rory, 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 you, le- you left Sony. <laughs> Just telling <laughs> you what it is. Leave, leave your Sony slang at home, buddy. <laughs> Just trying to let you guys know where they're breaking music now in the gamer world. Why is so, the right? young, so not in the strip club anymore. No, no. It's on the video game world. Okay. Like who's ever playing Call of Duty, that shit that really gets you going with your mm. AK-47, that's what's getting played on Spotify. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, uh, now Rory trying to be smart this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he, got yeah. his, he got his collar. He's a, collar. It's a good collar. No, he it's got a, a collar. He got his Sam Haitian pocket on the. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. good material. Rory gonna let us know he connect with us. <laughs> that's, the pocket? that's definitely yeah. pocket. That's definitely. He's trying to, try to give us the Rastafarian pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you must have put Bob Marley on yeah, your fucking saw, pocket. Saw, yeah. you walked yeah, in. Yeah, we. Yeah, you feel our struggle. You ain't got no weed in there, though, nigga. You know what oh, saying? Rory feels us. <laughs> that's, some, bro. that's some funny shit right there. That nigga feels us on the pocket. <laughs> God damn. You to the heart. That's a sick nigga. <laughs> What's in the pocket? Whatever y'all need, we get the pocket love. That's it. Rory, Rory look good at little shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's, some that's the shit. shirt where you kill him in, but like casually. Yeah, you can like like oh, I didn't even know he was getting dressed up I'm, today. I'm fly on the pocket. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a good. That's a good conference meeting after work bar special type of shirt. That's, that's, that's me. Yeah, you can go anywhere with that. That's, that's the that's I could get in anywhere right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, Rory, you look nice, man. Thanks, bro. Remember when Rory tried to stun on us one day and say, I'm the best dressed out of everyone here? <laughs> did I say that? I'm not saying I didn't. But... You did. Yes, yes okay. you did. Rory yeah, then the Joe went and day. bought a stylist. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, hey, I just want to point out that that is new age hating. Mm. That is the new age version of 
No, I'm just hating. Like, fuck your new age. Shit that's on. old school. I'm just, I'm just right. I'm hating. Joe. Yeah, that's old school hating. Oh. <laughs> well, you know. that's the that's the new age version of when the chick used to compliment your man when your man borrowed your shit. <laughs> <laughs> niggas is crazy. Niggas that did that is crazy. They should lock niggas up that do that. <laughs> Yeah, I just feel like them niggas you guys jail, never man. shared shirts with your with your people. I disagree with you. What? I do. Put that nigga in jail. You can't let your man hold some bar something and then put it on blast in front of the chicks. That's correct. Yeah, throw them niggas what, in jail. What, to what, do I'm, that. what I'm saying is, young men need to be taught that. Taught what? That. Not to do that. Oh yeah, I agree. But like, I, wait. I'm not mad at somebody that tried it once when they was 14, 15, when they was young and I like you need to be oh, taught. Yeah, you don't against, know at that age. Yeah, you need to be taught against yeah. doing that. Because yeah. maybe that's instinctive shit. Say, hey man. Hey, that's my shirt. <laughs> you, you know, Maul, didn't you you know your shirt you? fly. I, f- I feel like I've there was nev- a story nope. with nope. a car. Yeah, he, nope. he's done that. Maul got a million stories <laughs> of me I doing remember, that. No, Yo, when you start your podcast, podcasts, he's done that. <laughs> but, but tell him on your podcast. <laughs> I, 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 enough of that. I disagree. I just told Rory you did that. That's all. I didn't say he brought this podcast. I didn't bring. I didn't bring it up. No, you brought it before this podcast. I remember it was with my Escalade. Yeah, nasty ass nigga I was. What's nasty about Escalade? It's nasty to do that with an Escalade. It's nasty to do that. Period. Maul was stunting too hard. I was. <laughs> I swear to God. So he admits it. It wasn't even a stunt. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking shit. It I'm wasn't a stunt. If if I did that, I certainly didn't mean to because I did that one time when I was very, very, very young, and I might have did that to Dill. <laughs> Dill fucked you up off that, and, and I learned against it, and I and I never did that again. Yeah. I never did that again. That's nasty. Yeah, Ugh, that's nasty. <laughs> yeah, it's one on one shit. And 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 niggas stop. Let, let me let me come clean. This is gonna be the podcast. Of coming clean. <laughs> niggas stop lending me their clothes because I wouldn't give them back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta yeah. recognize that friend immediately. Oh, oh of course. Man, I had the the, the butters. Yeah, that, that was the slang when I was stealing the clothes. Butters. The butter Tim. <laughs> the butter hill figure jackets yeah. from Dills. <laughs> never gave it back. Dill ain't never see that shit. I had the yellow one, the red one, the yeah. blue one. Mm-hmm. I was fresh. Yeah. Broke. But fresh. And a bum. You're and fresh. on dust. And to rob you, <laughs> but you're yeah, fresh. Too much shit going on. But at life, least bro. you were fresh. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> you, you just kept going. All yeah, dust, one of these days, a bum. Don't do. <laughs> rob you. I and didn't say that. Fight and stab. That. I was like, nigga. Yeah, take your DMX voice off. Number one. Number two. <laughs> one one of these had. days, I'm gonna learn about your life. What you mean? Yeah, I, you I know, know nothing. About my I, know, life. I know. I know. I don't know nothing about your life. Yeah. I know you coming on Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> you come in Tuesdays and Fridays, nigga, and, and you hit the group chat sometimes. Yeah. Like, yo, that's wild. That's it. That's it. That okay. is all he offers to the group chat. That's it. <laughs> no, nothing else. Nah. <laughs> But wait, one day, one day if we kick Maul out the group chat. He was gone for a while. <laughs> and wait, and, but wait, you know how you kick somebody out the group chat and you think that it's going to be like effective somehow? Yeah, <laughs> he just left. <laughs> he just stopped talking to us. <laughs> Call us. See, for like five years. <laughs> We're just like, hey, wait a second now. <laughs> that was a momentary thing. Nah. Come back to the group chat. Nigga denied our little invite. I don't, I don't really, but I don't really. <laughs> the group chat shit to me Bought is a like, Samsung instead? Yeah, man. Oh, <laughs> but the, the group chat shit is only fun for me when it's some really <laughs> funny shit happening. Like, other than that, it's like, I don't want to be in here talking. Like You just got to mute the group chat is the key. Well, yeah, our, my mind's been muted. Yeah. Well, our, All group chats are muted. Our group chat got corny for like a year. Did it? Yeah. And then when Imani Is it went, still part when, of that when, year? When Imani I... went to LA, we got back popping again. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck that had to do anything? I don't fucking know. I'm talking shit right now. Um, And nobody cares about our group chat. <laughs> They do. But one they day, do, but one day we should have a group chat etiquette conversation because there is group chat etiquette. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I suppose this phone etiquette period. That's true. Don't like, call me being one. No, no. Don't. <laughs> don't I, just, I'm with Parks. Don't, don't call me. Don't me. ever Facetime yeah, me. Don't Facetime. You know what? Over the weekend, I said I missed that though. I miss my phone. I miss people calling I each other. My my phone is. I guess I play that game. I try to guess who's calling me. When my phone is vibrating in my Ian. pocket, only four people. <laughs> it's, it's my mom, it's my dad, it's Ian, it's Trey. Yeah, mm-hmm. sounds about right. Nobody else calls my phone but telemarketers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, damn, they have your they have your phone number. Oh, they doing all types of little weird tricks it's now. Like Ian and Premium, they, they, they call me. Call me from Parks' number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, telemarketers. Yeah, no, they do that. They got tricks. They do that. Yeah, they call you from your grandma's number, or they'll call you like one digit off your number. Yeah. I've gotten that a few times. Yeah, it looks familiar, so you like, want to oh, pick it up. So oh, yeah. I'm calling myself. Let me answer. Right. Yeah. Although I will say, I think FaceTime is becoming like the new regular phone conversation, though. 
Like people FaceTime a lot now. I hate everything yeah, don't about FaceTime it. Me. I re- I recently <laughs> FaceTime learned, audio. If you're gonna call me FaceTime, I audio, recently learned FBCC. people people voice note a lot more than I thought. There's voice oh, yeah. note. There's voice notes on Instagram now. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Know I didn't know that. I don't want to know all the capabilities of certain certain social media. Services. Listen, you voice <laughs> you voice note people that just do that in the middle of a text convo, not knowing where the fuck I am. I can't stand that shit. Like yeah. if we're texting back and forth, you send me a voice note. I could be somewhere. Yeah, I'm amazed every time Parks puts a little cartoon arrow on his Insta snap. Like, oh. <laughs> like I don't know how to do anything. No. I don't know how to put that I, swipe I, up shit. I put no. up the picture, it's the little chain at the top. I give you a little text. That swipe up. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I freak it with some fade. <laughs> not, not the fade. <laughs> Just freak it though. Like, what you mean? <laughs> Throw a little 19, 1977 on my shit. <laughs> this nigga said I freak it with some fade. <laughs> what are you talking about? What, nah, what just, are you freaking? <laughs> Mom, the post? <laughs> what do you yo, this nigga Joe is what, crazy? What would y'all man. like to talk about? Yeah, did we even start the podcast yet? Let's, no. no. Let, we're 16 minutes in. Let's okay, start. Nothing happened. Let's, let's did you play start. the drops? I don't even know what the fuck happened. I don't I don't know what's going or, on. Uh, but that's all, appropriate because people okay. are just now going to work. That is, yeah. People are just sure. now getting to work. I was talking about how there's no traffic out in the streets for the past few days. I'm just now learning what day it is, which podcast this is. Uh, been out of it a little bit, but I think that's normal every January. For sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got like... Rem- I, definitely, I definitely forgot Sunday was Sunday. Yeah. I thought Sunday was Monday. And anytime yeah, the football playoffs start, it, it just throws my oh, day, yeah, the days Saturdays off. Now yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what today is. Yeah. And yeah, know. I guess this is the official week that people are back. Because last week was kind of weird. Some people were going in super beast work mode, and I wasn't sure if I should be replying to emails or not. <laughs> and then there were some people that was like, dog, don't even talk to me until the 15th. Right. Now, I knew something was up when I got a, I got a call from Spotify and Revolt, loving hip-hop the same day. I was like, all right. All right <laughs> it's you, that day. Every, Time to work. Everyone's back. <laughs> everyone's back and re- requesting a schedule. <laughs> um, okay, so what's what's going on? Let's talk. Uh, the podcast went out on a quick field trip after uh, Friday's episode. Oh yeah, how was your little uh, your little party? Went to an R and B party, three of us. Uh, mo- well, more more the mixy boys. Joe stayed for maybe two to three minutes, <laughs> well, and then got out of there pretty quick. Uh, but it was all R and B, and me and Maul were talking about the songs now that you can't listen to all or them. play. Most of them. For example, we was in there. They was playing uh, Joel Santana, Chris Brown, "Back to the Crib." And me and Maul were looking at each other like, all right, so why doesn't she know she's going back to the crib, Chris? <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work in 20, 2019. Like, she don't know, but she's going back to the crib. How convenient is that? She don't know why that. Why doesn't she know? How convenient is fucking that? Then Miguel, that? how many drinks came on? Creepy. Oh, my God. That works. And we were next to a bar. <laughs> I was that uncomfortable. Record, that record, I'm surprised he... <laughs> They tried to get the Christmas song out of here this year too. What, what, which one was it? Uh, it's cold bells? outside. Yeah, it's cold they, outside. They got it out. Oh, they got it's it out cold here. outside is an old trick that shouldn't be used anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold outside. Yeah, worries. It's, it's cold in the car. Stay here. <laughs> Get in the car, the car. It's cold. And just like predators, he fools you with this happy music first. Mm, the hi hats are a little happy. Get, get you in a feel good zone. A little shuffle. Do just you, like predators. <laughs> what the fuck? Do you have your shots? Do you want to come back to America? Yuck. Man, he frustrated. <laughs> Are you coming like that? <laughs> the falsetto. How Miguel came on the track. <laughs> How many drinks will it take for you to come home? And with why me? are you so frustrated that she's sober? <laughs> like, 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 you hit the extra high note in the club. <laughs> yeah. If you hit do, that note in the club, you're people do get mad if you like drunk and somebody is sober around you, though. Like people hate that I don't drink anymore. That's like a I hate being offense. the sober one when everybody else is drunk. Who well, likes that's a terrible who likes to do their vices alone? That's true. Very true. Because then you start feeling. But like... But is drinking really a vice? Like a, yes. you're not like an alcoholic. Well, to me, yeah, it's a vice. Like if you just have a drink after work, is that like candy? Advice? Candy that's, can be a vice. If you want to do your vices alone all the time, that's a mental health thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I'm not joking. Yeah, no, I'm see very that. serious. I'm, I'm talking from experience. Or you just don't like people around you when you're doing your vices. No, that's weird. Never, though? No, you're doing a not vice that, that would not be approved of by your friends. That's true. <laughs> Therefore, that might be a problem, that's depending true. on your circle. I'm going to do something I never do. Uh, let's start with the Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> you start there. 20 minutes in. <laughs> Off to a good start for this episode. 
So the Golden Globes, what happened? You want to go right in the rip with Ark with the Kells again? The Kells. <sighs> it seems all right, to be floating Globes around all weekend. Oh, I will say, I, I will say all this. All right, let's do it. Fuck it. it it's amazing. It's amazing how many it's amazing. conversations that docuseries has, has birthed, honestly. How many what? How many conversations oh. that that docuseries has, has birthed? Um, yeah, I guess it's amazing. Like I didn't. I mean, I knew it was going to be obviously like some reaction and some things to come from it. But I'm not gonna lie, man. I was sitting back looking at some shit on social media, like, whoa! Like I forgot a lot of this shit ever ever happened. I forgot a lot of this shit ever really like took place. Yeah. But people was bringing up shit, and it's like, like I I just found out from as a result of that that little Kim was only 16 in that picture, her her, her, her iconic picture. Really? Yeah, I'd heard that before. I didn't know that. I never knew that. Yeah. I never knew she was 16 or 17 years old. I never knew that. Like, that fucked me up. I'm not going to lie. Because I remember being young and seeing that picture and thinking that was a grown woman. Well, we were probably younger than 16 at the time. Damn. That's what I'm saying. I was young, but when I saw that picture. Yeah, I was definitely younger than 16. You were so lucky that this is not the time to joke. You don't want to sound like the cookie monster. (laughs) You can't do. That's just your tone. You know they've never changed the uh, kids' songs? Like... The other day, Lex was watching cartoons. And it was, uh, so they stole the cookie from the cookie jar. Who, me? Yes, you. Couldn't be. I'm like, fam, 40 years. And that's the <laughs> yeah. same. It's who, a classic. Who is the publishing? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, they're Someone rich. Does. <laughs> yeah. They are rich is what they are. A random white dude walking down the streets of Manhattan that you will never know. In new, the, wait, in wait, new wait. There is publishing for that. For sure. Of course there is. Yeah, we rap. We stuck on the wrong shit. <laughs> that guy, that guy's the winner. Kid songs is definitely a, Hell a yeah. good market to get into. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's a body. Damn, I never even thought of that. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I man. did, but just in a different capacity. I'm I'm waiting for the market to catch up and podcast publishing become a thing. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> or pay us. Y'all, y'all, y'all oh man. All right, so uh. Come on, Maul. You were making you were making good points, and I cut you off with your deep hoodie on. No, I was just saying that. Um, yeah, I, it was. It's so many things that came from that docu series, you know, that started to you know come back to the forefront of conversations on social media that I really either forgot about or didn't know. And like I was saying, I didn't know Little Kim was that young in that picture. Like I never knew that. But learning that <clears throat> said what to you? What did it do for your for your it, mind? It said that. In, or you're in, thinking It said that I mean it, Well it let me know In our culture of hip hop um, That We've kind of been We've kind of been You know Behind the ball With this whole You know st- Not being old enough Versus Is she old enough To date older men Dating younger women Like we've kind of It's been in our face um, I, For me I'm, is, I'm going to say it The entire that, time that, that is one way to word it like it's been another, in our face. Another way to word it, it sounds like you're saying we've been programmed and conditioned, absolutely, to be, be accepted, accepting. So, it. so we're we're now desensitized and mm. numb in areas that we shouldn't. And be. And we're old. The hip hop is what thirty? What now? Shit. 40, 30, 30, 40 something. Nineteen seventy eight. Oh, so forty. Okay. Yeah. So we're older. The culture's older. Some reports say seventy three. Yeah, that's but, true. Yeah, but we're older, and so now you look back at things and you like, damn, like you know what I mean? Like it's a lot of shit that I was reading through and looking at, and I'm like, fam, this shit has really been right in front of our eyes this entire time. Whether we've been ignorant to it and just not giving a fuck about it, whether times have changed and everything is, you know, the world is different now and how we operate and how we think is totally different now. That ha- do may you have, have something do you to do have, with it. Do, does anyone have an issue with? Uh, the music industry conditioning uh, conditioning the masses to accept certain things? Certain things, yes. For sure. Of course. Absolutely. And, it's and I know it's just hop. music. Yeah, I, I do agree with you, Mal, just because that's what's been in front of our faces more than anything else. Mm-hmm. But I just, I think it's a world problem <laughs> to yeah. a degree. No, it's, I don't it's think definitely it's a world problem. Hip hop. I just think that's what's been in front of our face and that's what we've been participating in and condoning and even promoting. No, it's, it's definitely a world problem, but this is the culture I was raised That's on. what I'm saying. I think we're saying the same you thing. You know what I mean? It, so it's like... It's something we've actually been a part of where we are to blame to some degree as well. Right. Because we've always thought that... Yeah, I've thought Foxy on 
reasonable doubt at 15 was perfectly fine right. well, for guess, saying those things. I right. guess that's kind of what I was trying to tell Maul last week when I was like, uh, when I was like, I I like that we're that we're overly sensitive today, because whatever what is, what generation is this Z Y I think it's Z I don't know I like that Generation Z is coming out with with all of this intel saying Hey man what y'all was doing <laughs> hmm. Like I like that they're coming out and holding past generations accountable for shit that we maybe were blind to or turned to blind or turned to blind eye to. Mm-hmm. But they're telling that to older us. Right. So, yeah, we're looking back and we're saying, you'd be shocked at the amount of people I heard say the same thing you just said, Maul, how it was common practice for the older person to drive by the high school. Yeah. To go by the high school. like Even, yeah, we're 10 years apart. I, that hey, was regular for young, me too. Young people. Uh, when, I, I, I do, remember in high school. The I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not exonerating that behavior. Uh, but I'm acknowledging I'm acknowledging it's sick, but that was going on. <laughs> mm. See, and that's where the conversation normally gets a little fuzzy because if you start having these talks, I would my mind says eventually we would venture off into college culture too. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> For certain. Yeah. Which, I don't which... see that so so much. And and this conversation is not about that. This podcast is more so gonna be about the rabbit hole that my mind has been on since this R. Kelly doc. Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest with you guys, it has been. It has been. Good. I've paid attention to things that I've never paid attention to. And I think that's why some of these docs are really good when when done well. It just adds perspective and gets you to see things in a new light. Like, like song structure. Now more than ever, I paid more attention to... Like, I really want to tip my hat to Dream Hampton and everybody involved in that in that documentary. I do for sure. They did a really good job. Uh, without offending anyone, I would say up until part six, when it was the the thirty five year old fan that confused a few people. But I understand why y'all had her there. Y'all were saying that he's not just targeting young people; he's mm-hmm. targeting. He's targeting older people, people of a certain mindset, people that can be had. He's tar- I, un- I understood. She just came off a little funny. Um, but outside of that amazing job, song structure now. I'm look. I'm listening, to, and, and all of these R. Kelly songs I'm extremely familiar with, but the song structure and even Take Bump and Grind. A lot of R. Kelly songs now I'm noticing, and I guess there is some genius in it, but... He says the 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 blatantly he says the catch you line and it catches you but it's the next two or four bars that say something sick that says something sick I have went back and noticed that in in maybe half of his discography <laughs> mm-hmm. I never noticed that before even in the name a song and I'm going to find it Bump, bump, bump and grind. I went to I went to bump and grind just because that's the biggest one to me. But oh yeah, I that's mean, my point. My mind's telling me no, but my body, my body is telling me yes. I don't want to hurt nobody. That's great. That's that's so genius that you are had already. You're done. You're fi- you are hypnotized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That next four is nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all nuts now. But I mean, even in creative land back then, forget that now we have all this information. Right. What does it mean? Like, when you just start asking people what do certain lyrics mean, like, I don't want to hurt anybody. What does that mean? What does that mean come on, coming off of what your mind and your body is telling you to do? It is a little, like, he has it is a lot, little weird. He has, he has a lot of those. And even when I went to the other songs, I started singing Ron Isley songs that R. Kelly wrote. Mm. I said, oh, damn, you did it to Ron. <laughs> Fuck guy I'm fucking made Ron sound nuts. Keep what on the <laughs> down low, you fucking freak bastard. <laughs> you fucking, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? That whole series, everything he did. Yeah. Like I never I just never paid attention to some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh I've been on a hunt for information. Like and a lot is disturbing. Like there's a lot to unpack in this shit. A lot, a lot is disturbing. Sparkle put a put a record out. <laughs> she did. Sparkle, Sparkle was promoting a single recently. 
in the in the height of all in the height of everything. I the mean, the ex wife's old footage popped up. Yeah, where she was repping. Uh, that confused some people. Um, and then something else came out with with her saying she's still able to separate the act, the the artist from the person. The ex wife said that. Yeah. Yeah, I have a clip. I, and, mean, I can uh, find it with my phone. Hold up. Let me, let me, let me and be, she let, mentioned let be informative how, for how good of a provider he was, you know, was definitely leaning on the side of he's not that bad of a guy. But this was old footage, correct? Uh, some of it was old. Some of it was relatively recent. Uh, I mean, that's, I think, part of the whole mind control thing that... A lot. A lot. Well, her, her still carrying his last name through everything was a red flag to me to begin with, but... Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be because there are reasons people do that. Uh, some people do it for the kids. Uh, you know, Tina Turner did it, did it, and she she was being abused. Like no, it's it's it yeah, happened. But, a red yeah, flag. But Tina, yeah, but <laughs> Tina Turner was a was a, was a legend. Like was, was she's that, an iconic that figure. That like change. that was her stage name. It doesn't change my statement. She was abused by someone, and she no, married, I, and I, she kept the name. I get that. I <laughs> that, get that's I, all I'm saying. I get that point, but what I'm saying is she kept the name because. That was the name that she built her career and her legacy on. Part that's that stuff. Your career and your legacy uh, Kelly's is not ex-wife really. Kelly's Your career really and your legacy is not really important to me when it, when we talking about you being abused. No, but it was it something. wasn't. But it was important to Tina Turner to her brand. And Maul saying that R. Kelly's ex-wife doesn't. Not have and no that disrespect to her, but yeah, she's not a world figure. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like she's. I'm just saying, like her changing her last name. I don't think anybody would have been like, "Damn, like you should have kept that last name because now you your brand and everything is messed up." Like, I don't, I just don't, I don't see that. That's just it. me. That's all it. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Tina Turner is a whole because people said that to me too, and I'm like, "But Tina Turner is Tina Turner. Tina Turner. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's who she is. She's a world class performer, icon, mm-hmm. legend. You know, R. Kelly's ex wife. She's a she's a dancer, but I don't know if she was has she built a, a iconic dance career off of the last name Kelly? I don't think so. I'm certain that there's some perks that come with having the last name Kelly. So are the I, perks, I, I, I would assume. Are the I'm, perks, not saying, are the, I'm not saying that's why she did that. No, I'm I just saying. Be very if, careful if so, with my words. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But if so, do the perks outweigh the, you know, the, the trauma and everything that you went through? So you're going to keep that? I just don't, I just don't understand. Mm. It's a lot of things around that whole situation that, you know, it's, it's just questions that, Naturally, because I think that's what a docu series does. It, it it gets conversations going. It it creates questions. It creates mm-hmm. thoughts, and so I think it, it it worked. You know, I think what they what the producers wanted to, to come from the show. I think it absolutely worked because I mean, again, like the entire it seems like the entire online community is still talking about this docu series. Yeah, that's important. So conversation is important. Absolutely. One of the th- one of the things I saw people saying was, uh, you know, I saw Jada Pinkett speak out and say she asked for someone to explain to her how his streams could possibly go up at a time like this. Mm. I saw some other people confused by that. P- pardon me for being confused by the confusion by that, but I am. The songs are good songs sonically. And a docu series just told us that there have been clues that we ignored for years and years and years. Yeah. So people are naturally Na- naturally, going naturally. That's just a natural yeah, going thing to look for it and to do. Piece, put together the puzzle. You have also just introduced this this genius catalog of music to a brand new audience. It doesn't matter how it was introduced, but certainly they're going to find out about what you said. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. stream. The streams are in- increasing. Yeah, uh, I saw another report, and we didn't talk about a lot of stuff. I saw another report that said R. Kelly is worth $1 million today. I don't know how accurate that is. Um, And I don't, I don't, you know, and again, I don't care about what somebody's worth and, what, you know, all these. I do. I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck about I that. I do, but, but let me explain why before I forget. I do. Money, power, and respect, it, it, it have, it has you greeted and handled differently in this country. Now that I've seen this docu series, if they take if they take I do believe they're gonna come for R. Kelly. They're gonna take him down. It's mad other people that gotta go down with him. This is not a one man operation. Right. This is a ring. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like 
Let's call it what it is. This is a complicated, intricate ring that could not be conducted by just one person. There's plenty of people uh, complicit in this. And the irony of it is a lot of those people were in that documentary. Yeah, several. So if if this documentary takes them down, it's taking down the people that were in the doc. Let let me go even further, uh, Maul. So... You can't you can't provide you can't you can't provide you can't have a ring without having money. <laughs> That's number one. Number I two, another one of the very disturbing facts that I walked away from this doc thinking, and please, I don't mean to offend anyone, but this was one of my natural thoughts when watching this doc. It was hard not to come away feeling like some families and some and some people just were paid off. They said that they were. Oh, I mean, but that was my first question when the girl that caught uh, mono and then she caught the other disease that paralyzed her foot. She said he sent my mom a thousand dollar check, and I looked at my homeboy and said, "Do you think her mom cashed that check?" I'm sure. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. And Sparkle did allude that she thinks that maybe her family was paid off to go to that court case and be like, that's not our daughter, and have the daughter say, that's not me. Yeah, they said... Her, she alluded. There was her, no proof. Her brother but, or someone was playing guitar. Well, that was... Right. All right, so that was kind of the weirder part, too, that her brother-in-law, which would be the father of the daughter that was in that video, continued to play guitar for R. Kelly and was in credits after that incident. That's crazy. So you would have to think that there is a lot of money going into this sick-ass shit. And, and let me continue with Maul... The judicial system is a money thing. Mm-hmm. Um, let me continue. The, the lesser R. Kelly's net worth is, that is when I think they're going to snatch him. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Money, like, money can save you a lot. In, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. In the court <laughs> yeah, when, 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 when that money decreases to a certain point, this is all coming to a halt. I believe some people are going to come forward with new information. They say more will be revealed. That's how, that's what that's, that's what they say. I'm waiting. I'm well, waiting more, for that. Well, more has been revealed as a result of this docu series. Oh, out. baby, you yeah. just wait. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh no. Oh no. There was so much psychology and all that I learned in this shit. I don't know how anybody didn't come away from this shit feeling like R. Kelly has a stash of boys somewhere. R. Mm. Kelly's bisexual. Mm. Mm. I, I was shocked that I, I, some people didn't get that. Right. Well, what he had the young lady Dominique doing seemed a bit on the bisexual side. That's odd. <laughs> That's odd. Well, yeah. I don't know if it would be called bisexual, but there's dressing psych- her up as a man there's, is there there's something there. There's psychology to taking that beautiful girl because she was beautiful mm-hmm. for sure. And making her look and dress like a boy. There's psychology to that. And the more I thought about it, I'm telling y'all, I've been on a rabbit hole. The more I thought about it, yeah, that's from that's from you being abused. That's from that's from you being abused. You so you've been abused. I, I would go on on the record as saying he's been probably been abused by man and woman. And woman, both. Yeah, both. No, I think he's I'll that, take man. it a step further than that. Watching the doc, I couldn't look at Bruce anymore. No, I couldn't look at Bruce anymore. Absolutely not. Bruce made me. Bruce made me feel like, and I don't have any factual shit. Don't sue me for defamation. Bruce made me feel like he was involved. <laughs> yeah, hmm. that's how I felt. Yeah. by by some of his views. Yeah, saying you have a preference. Also, so that, was, that was that was that was also that was being sick. no. That was yeah. the, one of the grossest part of the documentary. Also, being the older male sibling in that entire situation. One, going through the same things that R. Kelly went through as far as abuse, and two, being the, quote, protector of right. your siblings. Right. You're involved. Yeah. And I didn't take it for granted that when R. Kelly did go to trial, his defense was, that's not me. That was my brother. Yeah, that's crazy. Which I think it was the, the younger, younger brother. brother. Yeah. He said that about the younger brother, but that's not what I got from it. <laughs> mm. It's not what I got from it. The younger brother couldn't believe that that was said about him. <laughs> right. mm. I can believe it. Like, what would force you to say that there, even in defense of something? Like, you had to th- thought about this. 
Like you had thought a lot out. Like I've heard that. Like I've been down this fucking rabbit hole where he's got these contracts making these women. Well, they said it on the shit. Where he's got these contracts that he's making people admit to things that they really didn't do in case there's ever uh back uh uh in case anything backfires, in case anything goes wrong. This is really complicated stuff here. This is not just an abuser targeting people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> His lawyers are super nasty also. They're all they're all mm-hmm. they're all they're all nasty. Super nasty. Yeah. And another thing that came uh, for me personally that I took away from it was I've been really ignorant to the fact that a lot of women in my life have been sexually assaulted and sexually abused. And I didn't know that. I spoke to a lot of women that I'm I'm close to. After the with. last podcast you did, you did yeah. speak to a lot of people you know? Yeah, a lot of women and I, you know, I I I had to apologize. I really didn't know that I knew so many women that were sexually abused. I'm telling you, all you have to do is speak to women. Yeah. Yeah. They like they'll confide in you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They've been they've been waiting to. Yeah. Word. Because men don't make it the easiest for a woman to just confide and tell them you know their secrets, especially with abuse. Right. We're we're not the easiest to talk to, especially mm-hmm. with those types of things. Well, especially if so you if, if you give them just a, a little bit, a woman will definitely do that. Yeah. And it, it's worth the conversation to have because you do find out things of girls you've known for fifteen years. Like it really, <laughs> that, it really bothered me though. Like that mm-hmm. shit really fucked me up. Like I had no idea. Like I thought that was something that, you know, I would have known from knowing some of these women for so many years. I'm like, what? Like I I never had any idea about that shit. And they kind of looked at me like, it happens more than you think. One thousand percent. Now, now and that's, that that is some scary shit. I know, but then add the incest on top of it, just for some extra extra sicko spice. Like, just a, just just a, we we're looking at some. This is deranged, deranged shit. Um, and I'll go further than just the women you may know in your life. Could check on some of your own family members. Mm-hmm. For sure. And I'm not saying that have been abused, have been doing the abusing. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm. For sure. So it's it's not just friends. Speak speak with your family and well, you'll find out some shit that you had no idea was going on for well, the past 30 well, years. See, and that's why we have to be careful with some of these conversations because they are conversations of the times. Rory just said that and it instantly brought me back to uh, my mom and dad's time, maybe my grandparents' time when... In the black households, what happened there stayed there. What happened in your family, yeah, because there was some sick stuff happening in families, it just stayed in the family. And speaking for myself, I don't have to be alive. I, looking at my family, I can see what my family endured. <laughs> right. And I think a lot of this shit was, is, you know, it's, it's, it's handed down from generations because you know in talking to like I said some women and then doing research on you know families and sexual abuse our ancestors were forced to have sex with each other Mm -hmm. through slavery so I kind of feel like you know even from that it was kind of maybe handed down generational like you know what I'm saying this is a very loaded conversation it's very deep 1000 and and that's why you know I'd be having to trick my brain to, to chill out because, like, you go all over the place with just what your mind can can wonder in these instances. Like, it was a quick second over the weekend, and I was like, damn, man, the white niggas get caught with this shit and get 200 mil. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, y'all know I'm, I'm not the wokest, but I was like, damn, is there something to all the black people we like getting, like, mm-hmm. who's just putting all this out? <laughs> like, right. where, where are we getting our... our like it's some craziness. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, you just think a lot. Again, back to uh, back to R. Kelly being bisexual for a minute. So on YouTube, they did, they feel like they didn't found this nigga's man. <laughs> so of, of and, course. and his name is Bubba. Come on, man. And that made sense to me. <laughs> R. Kelly would be attracted to, to some nigga named point, Bubba. But Bubba is funny. Oh, you know R. Kelly tried to kick it to Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> like that didn't deter him. Of at, course, at all, at no. all. And Bubba looked like a clean cut guy on YouTube. <laughs> I'm like, all right. He looked like R type. He looked like R <laughs> <R's> type. type. <laughs> Hopefully, Bubba was of age. Ew. Like no, Bubba looked like an adult. You can't. You can't. You, you can't have a name like Bubba. Bubba looked like a grown ass man. Yeah, you don't yeah. get the name Bubba young. Yeah, except for Bubba is fifty plus for sure. I didn't see any of these reports. This this yeah, was on this wormhole. 
Because, listen, Twitter will find somebody. For sure. For <laughs> in sure. a heartbeat. What else? What other takeaways did you guys have? What did you guys think about all the celebrity responses? Uh, Omarion responded. Bun B responded. Uh, a lot of people responded. Let me, let me read. Well, it was, it was, it's interesting to me for Omarion to respond because oh, of Oh, man. The, wow. Yeah, of the, you know, the B2K thing and, you know... We all know that story. Yeah. So it was interesting for Go on him. tour. Yeah. Don't tour coming up. So I'm it was not, interesting. Not trying to bring up dark times. <laughs> I mean, it's just interesting. But like I said, this, it created what I think the producers wanted. It created a conversation. It created a, narr- a, a, a whole narrative of, yeah, this is something that's been going on right before our eyes. And it's time that we address it and we speak about it. And I saw a lot of people saying like, oh, now all these rappers and collaborators with R. Kelly want to come out and say this shit is nasty. You have to give people some leniency. Of course it was wrong because we did have some information, but you can't just cancel and chastise people for now saying it. Mm. Because a lot of times, and I guess in those collaborations, all collaborations aren't, we're best friends now. Yeah. Sometimes some, somebody, somebody studio. emailed a beat sometimes. Right. Yeah. Like you may not have all that information. And now that you have it, you're speaking up. Right. Mm. So you can't just shit on, Oh, oh now y'all want to talk about it. Yeah. Now I do Because yeah, now, I, now I have Literally all the information In front of me right. And that's disgusting And I feel awful That I participated In the career Of this, this nasty guy yeah. And that's how and That's yeah, how I felt I, I saw felt a couple the same way. I'm, I'm sorry Ma. I saw a couple of people Trying to hang John Legend For taking a picture With Harvey Weinstein At some point Yeah you can b- b- like, Before you, we had You think John Legend Harvey And Harvey Weinstein, Weinstein Were best friends In the hotel together With abusing women no yeah, and probably some that, guy he saw around yeah John Legend <laughs> didn't know all of this shit that came out yeah, about we just Harvey. didn't like, have just didn't have the information yeah that's all and, that's and, and we can take that now and be a bit more cognizant on who we do collaborate with or pay attention more to people's social lives and how they interact with women right. now we can move forward with that right it sucks that we're now in 2019 just figuring that out but I hate to say it is what it is but let's at least take this info now and move forward with it so I understand a lot of us now, this is back to the streams going up. I understand a lot of us now feel like, how how could we have been so fooled? How could we have been so naive? How did we let so many things slip through the cracks? Which now has us looking at everything a bit skeptically. Um, I'm seeing y'all drag a plenty of, plenty of people into this. And that's just where it's a little dangerous because these are heavy... Your words are your sword, and these are heavy swords that y'all are throwing around with some people that you can't really prove this stuff about. Or you guys are asking people to come forward and start talking about really dark subjects. Of course you understand why multi-million dollar and billion dollar businesses would not feel like you guys are privy to this. <laughs> I'm not exonerating anybody. I'm, I'm just saying... That's the thinking here. I see a lot of people trying to bring drag Aubrey and things. Mm-hmm. Am I alone in that? No, I saw. No, but saw that's a lot of clips. That's that's a. Uh, I kind of feel like you know, Joe. Like that's something that we do a lot too. Like, you know, one person gets caught, and you know, you start pointing fingers and you start blaming other people, and you know, putting the light on what they did, and oh, why y'all not saying nothing about him? Or he did the same thing. He did. And it's like, I, I kind of knew that that was going to be something else that came out of this whole situation. But I think, like you were saying uh, earlier, it, it, we at a point now where it's it's dangerous for us to just take things that we see in clips and hear online and, and not really dig into and read into the entire situation. Because, you know, we, we get to a point now where it's, it's going to, a lot of people are going to start being called called out on things that they've done and things that they've said when, you know, they probably shouldn't be because it probably isn't something that, you know, they're not exactly down with this whole, you know, mess with young girls thing or they're not, you know, the whole trying to trying to talk to a woman that's younger than you or dating a woman that's younger than you or having sex or doing sexual acts with young girls like with the Drake thing, if you bring a girl on stage and it's kind of like, and I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I feel like I can name five other artists I've been at shows 100%. and seen do Absolutely. that. 100%. Yeah. 
So it's I mean, like that's, that's the R and B move. That doesn't make it okay. <laughs> no, Not at that, all. It doesn't. It doesn't make it okay. But we can't put it in the same breath. As I agree with you. What, what you, R. Kelly has going on? If you on. pull someone from the audience and you're going about your show, right? I do think that it's your responsibility to, to find know how out she how is. old that she's young of lady age. is. Absolutely, I agree. I agree. Remember but what I'm seeing people con, that happened to that's, that's yeah. all I'm saying. But what yeah. I'm seeing yeah. right, but what I'm seeing people do is they're trying to put it in the same breath. It's not. It's not. Yeah. Don't do that's well, dangerous. Well, well, don't do well that. it, it's not today. Yeah. We don't have enough information to declare that about Aubrey today. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Or some of the other people that I'm seeing you guys name. Again, this this R. Kelly shit is 40 years of accumulative work and evidence and like documented trails of shit <laughs> right. yeah i also think it's okay for like one person at a time or maybe like you know they say r kelly okay but what about such and such that did this too harvey weinstein for instance he's mm-hmm. gonna get his day too yeah you know what i'm Absolutely. saying like it's okay to take people down as they come yeah i you know agree what i mean as information comes but i'm just saying we can't start just you know looking at every just putting everybody in the same box, like oh, he brought a young girl on stage. He's guilty of that. Like, come on, don't do so, that. So, so yeah. now, so now, so now, uh, the R says that he's coming forward with a website called Surviving Lies. Mm-hmm. Yuck. Which uh, they tried with a Facebook page, which I think got taken down. But I did see the report. They did that take that do page it. down. Salute to Facebook. Yeah. And uh, I did do some digging as to find out why and why you can't sue. Uh, when your name is used or a certain shit like that. And the Lifetime legal team seems to think that they've done a fine job corroborating all of this evidence. And if you would like to bring the police involved, then please right. do so. Bring bring a court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't bring yeah, a court. Bring a court to this mess. That's yeah. the tough thing. That's like a drug dealer getting robbed and going to the cops. Mm-hmm. Like right. you can't really do that. I think Lifetime would. <laughs> Sorry, actually, R. Like, Lifetime would actually welcome the court. Yeah, to yeah. They are. You gotta think it through, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see that. See how less complicated the ring get with only one M. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. Now nah, with all this, they start dollars saying you, you can sue people. You can't sue. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're right. But that's um, getting in his pockets. How could that's bad money management thing? The amount of writing credits and all that shit that R. Kelly has, which is why I don't outside of his own catalog, how could he be worth a million dollars? Because it's true. expensive to have a ring. I mean, I agree. That's Fair. what I remember. Remember a long time ago when we was talking about Bill Cosby, and 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 I was saying how I spoke to some some people from the Me Too movement, and they were saying that if nineteen people, if thirty people, if sixty people are saying something, then that's an expensive ring, and people are not that coordinated. Right. We're dealing mm-hmm. with the one instance where he is that coordinated. Yeah. it is a ring, and it costs a lot of money. I was just listening to the money, the figures they were throwing around in the doc. Uh, outside of Sparkle's one dollar or hundred dollars that he gave her, everything else was yo send two fifty over there, right. S- send five over there, right. send a quarter over here. Sent like they was gone. Listen, that I believe I could fly. Money was flying. <laughs> yeah. It was flying. It was going. So I mean, for me, if you're worth an M, and I haven't, I haven't checked that. I haven't fact fact checked that at all. I could see it being believable. Yeah. I, I could see it. Plus, he spoke to have, doing bad business for a long time, so and not being able to read and understand contracts and stuff. So there's a good chance that he wasn't even getting his proper share at the time where he was making hundreds of millions of dollars. If he wasn't so sick, I swear I would wonder how many. Oh, shit, that's the other thing. <laughs> I've heard at least nine to ten stories now in the past four days. I heard the daylight story about R. Kelly and his basketball routine, and, you know, we dismissed it because it's daylight. But daylight was saying how, you know, R. Kelly got a gym in, in the studio, and niggas come through and they play ball, but it, it was weird when he went to play because it was like his friends had rules. Like, he, he was the only one that was allowed to shoot the ball. And daylight was saying, even on a fast break, it would be, it would be, it would be four on none. <laughs> and they would wait. And hand it off to Robert on the wing. <laughs> Robert on the wing is sick now that you're sick. You can't even be on the wing. No. no. Hell no. It's a nasty ass game. Of wing, the cockpit, nothing. Yeah, so yeah, that put, I have now heard I've heard that story ten nine to ten times from other people now. 
And I know that has nothing to do with pedophilia. No, no, no. It's, it's it has control. to do with controlling. But it does. It's, it's, right. it's some predator shit. Well, like, that's yeah. why I was telling y'all with the whole, you know, Best of Both Worlds tour when that whole uh, thing fell apart. You I tell was, us off air, are you sharing something here? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is, I mean. Well, share but, it with but, us. But, but the part of the beef was R. Kelly didn't. He didn't no, well, we are to not. Exclusive. <laughs> He I am so <laughs> sick of the mixy boys. He didn't, <laughs> I, 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 honestly, enough of y'all. Rory's stupid. <laughs> he didn't want. He didn't want anybody backstage. He didn't want anybody in the halls. When, when you say walking, he, who are you referring to? R. Kelly. Got it. He didn't want anybody in the halls when he was walking through, <laughs> and, and and he didn't want anybody looking him in his eyes. Yeah, fuck you. And trying, he, fuck you trying to look at me for? Yeah, but you can't be on. <laughs> yo, yo, Ma, don't Hove. look at me. You, yeah, like, but you can't be hey. on tour with some a bunch of hey, what's your good name? niggas and tell niggas yeah, not tell, look you in your eyes. Jay, eye, who? Like, yeah, no. Nah. Get out of my hole. Yeah, you can't do that. Why the fuck are you in my hole? You ain't got a number one. You can't do that. You can't do that. That I knew that was, it was over for that shit at that point. You don't want grown niggas from the hood looking you in your face. Well, one day we're gonna we gotta have a conversation. Not today because we having serious conversations. One day we gotta have a talk about some of the artist rules at these shows. Like some of these it's artists crazy. is weird. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So for when you tell me sure. that R. Kelly is weird at the show, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I get very it. weird. I get it. I very, understand that. Very weird. I understand Tata Smack. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. All I got to say is Rockefeller may have got it right. Dame Smacks, Harvey Weinstein, Tata <laughs> Pepper Sprayed R. Kelly. Yeah, that, that, was, that was the last of both of those worlds. <laughs> yeah. Rockefeller those said, Those worlds fuck never here. collided again. Not a sign of Thanos. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah, man, but that's, yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just bad <clears> because, you, like I said, you start. You start questioning a lot of shit that you was raised on and a lot of people that you kind of looked up to at some point. You know what I mean? When you get old enough, you start looking back and you start really thinking about shit, mm-hmm. man. Like, oh, yeah. I lied to my yeah. entire life. Like, I started feeling like that. Oh, wait. what Do you think you weren't? I mean, I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm starting to feel like I was, especially are, in a lot of you, areas. You, you, you were, man. You yeah, were. like, that, that's, I honestly well, started feeling see, like that. I don't that. even know if lied to is really the right phrasing because that was okay and people were living that way. I don't know if they were lying to you. That's just how people were living. And it's just a sick, disgusting way to live. Well, you live you live how they make you live in a controlled society. Yeah. <laughs> Which I don't know is a lie. It might sound better if they was lying. No, they was telling the truth. They were doing it. Well, now I'm lost. Who's there? Whoever were doing the, the abusive things to people. Oh, no. I, I relate everything back to the government. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I relate everything back to the government. Fair. Yeah. I mean, when you say they... I mean, well, yeah, they that. sounds like they. They is definitely the government, yeah, but it's them. everything this, ever going on in this on, instance, the, the the environment that we were all living in and the things that people were doing, maybe not lying, maybe just trying to hide some things, but really living that way. <laughs> yeah, or make it seem normal. that it was okay for th- right. those types of things to happen. Right. And I mean, I guess I, what I mean when I say I relate everything back to the government is some of these sick conversations that we're having are very common practice in low income. Uh, the lower income neighborhoods. Right. Mm. That's what I mean. So in my brain anyway, and again, I dropped out, I don't know. The government expects certain things from certain parts of geography. Mm. These conversations that we having about what was going on in that house, wherever that house was, was it Chicago? Yeah. Chicago, yeah. When we talking about incest, when we talking about abuse, we probably talking about addiction, we probably talking about mental health, where where there was never a fix, there was never therapy, there was never they, of all of these chances to to say no or do something different, it never occurred. Very very common. In my brain, I relate all that to population control. <laughs> like in my brain, I, I relate that to, to yeah, I do. I relate everything. I do. You're I'm, not I'm, wrong. I'm coming clean. You're not wrong. So let me go down this rabbit hole of relating everything. Uh, so I'm watching the Joe. I'm watching the the part six of the R. Kelly doc. And and it's toward the end after the older 35-year-old fan story was told. And it's toward the end, and they're showing clips about how people feel. And Charlemagne is there, and Ebro is there, and I'm just there playing with my kid and having a blast. <laughs> and then they showed a clip of us, uh, the Joe Budden podcast. It was an older clip. It was from when we recorded at Ferraris in New Jersey before we were at Parks. Um can't say I remember it, but we said the right shit. <laughs> we when, said, I, when I saw us come up there, <laughs> you got scared can't a lie, bit. I was a little nervous. Um, 
But we said, look, before you get to you being nerv- your nervousness, let's say we said the right thing. <laughs> yeah, we did. We said the right thing. That's important to highlight. Um, so now let's get to Rory's nervousness. And I commend you for your nervousness. Why are you nervous? I was nervous because sometimes with this podcast, I think some of our joking can come off the wrong way. And sometimes we can be a bit insensitive in the earlier days. What so, a, so I was a little bit nervous that maybe we were joking about something we shouldn't have been joking about. That's all. I understand you. What a luxury to be nervous about jokes. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous right now. <laughs> As you should be, but that's why we're going to talk about it. This is, th- th- that, that's why we're probably the only place that is going to have some of these conversations that I'm about to have. Because our clip came up on that on that screen, and and I own it, so that's a licensing issue. I wasn't I wasn't asked for that footage to be used, so I was just as shocked as everyone else was. I was learning that we were on this dock hmm. in real time. Same, <laughs> yeah. And the more I thought about it, I said to myself, "Okay, the thinking there is probably." With such a greater good happening, they probably don't assume that somebody is coming forward to claim money from from them airing their doc. Right. Mm. Like, there's a goal, there's an objective. Who's that creep? Right. The answer is, whoever it is, it's not me. It's not me. Um. So I thought I thought nothing more of it until I began to read things. <laughs> And as I began to read things, I saw a lot of horrible shit. I saw a lot of horrible shit being said. Um, and it made me hearken. Look, hearken. Ooh, that's how you know I'm about to say some <laughs> serious shit. Mm-hmm. Hit him with a heart. It, it sounds like a rich white guy's middle name. It made me. I'll tell you, I'm dying to be fucked. <laughs> uh, uh, it made me go back to our conversation last week where some of the fans were killing people for not coming forward and not being a part of this doc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we were saying, I think it's a million reasons that people would not want to be involved, but now I was witnessing it in, in, in real time. Um, boy, was I getting killed. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I was getting dragged through the mud. For speaking up on such a positive doc, such a positive, informative doc, right? So I said to myself, well, shit, that doesn't feel good. (laughs) They had lists going around. It was like 30 names, cancel them all. I was there. I didn't I didn't feel good about it. I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be out in a moment of transparency. I was hurt. I was hurt by it. It didn't sit right with my soul. And I thought that maybe it would pass. And I went to sleep and I woke up. And it still didn't sit right with my soul. And that was the moment that I was faced with the decision that many men are faced with. Well, how much do I want to talk? (laughs) For some months now, I've been alluding to this society that makes it not so welcoming for men to share, right? For many reasons. Uh, Men don't share because everything you say technically is a deposition and can be used in court. Mm -hmm. That's one. Uh, Men don't speak in fear of what will, what may happen to them professionally, two, and three, fear, period. Fear because we have indeed treated women improperly right. at some point in our lives. <laughs> yeah, very true. I think that's the blanket statement that a lot of men just aren't ready to come forth with. And that's why it's such scary times. Yeah. But that these conversations have to be had because you have to contextualize some of these things. 
Like, this is the first week I actually looked up the word abuse. Mm. It said improper usage. Period. Guilty. Yeah. I have utilized women improperly at some point in life. Yeah. I have utilized people improperly. <laughs> yeah. See, and that's why contextualizing is important. Some of this stuff is not gender specific. <laughs> uh, at all. At all. Some of this stuff is humanity. True. Some of this stuff is people treating people improperly. But forget about all that for a second. So I saw my name on all of these lists, and then people started to hit my mentions. Let's talk about it. We have a much larger audience today. A lot more people are looking at and pay, paying attention to Joe Budden today than they were before. So people naturally start to hit my mentions and say, yo, Joe, I'm seeing some shit. <laughs> uh, care to share? I, I was unaware. I saw that. I saw a little bit. I saw a lot of, and this is a wildfire. One person says something. 20 people say, wait, what happened? And now that person's word is uh, certified. <laughs> right. And now if you don't jump in and you don't say something, that word just continues to be certified. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the other thing here. Silence. Let's talk about it. We're going to talk about it a lot today. Silence uh, in the court of public opinion is an, om an, om an admission of guilt. <laughs> For most people, if you did not do something, you just come forward and you say, hey, I didn't do that. In this, in, in this, it's a bit more layered, and I would like to use myself as an example because I owe it to people. That's why I'm doing it. I owe it to certain people, and I've never done anything to help myself. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm having this conversation because morally— it's the correct thing to do, and there's no more an appropriate time than right this second. Yeah. So for the people that were talking to me, confused, looking for clarity, let me try my best as, as, as a mature, responsible adult to help myself. Uh, years ago, I was in a relationship with a woman that I was not compatible with. And we had a bad breakup. I take that back. We didn't have a bad breakup. We handled our breakup badly. <laughs> There's a difference. <clears throat> I'm a, I, I've never spoken about this in depth, uh, not in fear of ramification, but out of respect. Mm -hmm. Out of respect for the young lady. Uh, out of respect for her child or children, her family, my family. Uh, and that's just an actual thing to do. When you put something behind you, you just try to put it behind you. But let's get into it. I was in a relationship with a woman that I was not compatible with, nor was I behaving like a man that was in a committed relationship. I was not behaving like I was I was telling someone one thing and I was doing another thing. <laughs> hmm. That's what was happening years later. Let's talk about it. Um, I was not considerate to my partner's feelings. I was not behaving in a manner that was indicative of someone that was in a monogamous relationship. I was exited. I was disconnected. Right. And I'm keeping this on me. Because I want to I want to always be mindful to respect other people, their anonymity and people that just want to move forward and put certain things behind them. Um, that bad breakup culminated in domestic abuse allegations and me being ordered away from my home for weeks at a time, eight weeks to be exact, six to eight weeks. That was two months at the end of the trial period, I could return. That was to give the authorities the time for their due diligence and to do proper research to these allegations. That's a conversation to be had. And I'm the perfect person to have it because I've gone through this in New Jersey and New York. And my experience was very different both times. I'm here to share it with you guys. In New Jersey... 
they took a lot of time to get to the bottom of what happened. Mm. I was ordered away from the young lady for her safety and protection because states don't play. The states are not playing with women's safety is what I'm saying. So I was ordered away. They spoke to her in private. They allowed her the proper time to remove her belongings and get her situation together. And we were to return to court. And we, when we returned to court, the young lady stood up after some of those feelings in that angry moment had passed. After we were trying to hurt each other, because that's what we were doing after the breakup. We did a bunch of interviews where the sole objective was to hurt the other person. Certainly somebody out there can understand this stuff. This stuff is never said. Newsflash, she won that. <laughs> she killed those interviews. I was horrible. I was young. I was immature. I was on pills. Dark times for me. I was rebellious. I had this I don't give a fuck attitude that I've managed to shed. Somehow I've learned, no, certain things you got to care about. I didn't really get the ramifications of even the accusation back then. So I did nothing to help myself. And unfortunately, when the judge throws this stuff out, it's not really publicized the way it's publicized when the allegations are, are birthed. True or false. Fast, fast forward. Fast forward in typical Joe Budden fashion, I make the same mistake more than once. I later get involved with a young lady who I didn't know very much about, and she didn't know very much about me. It was short-lived. It didn't last very long. Uh, and when it ended, she felt she had a lot of emotion. And she went about that emotion at that time the best that she sought how, which resulted in me, again, <laughs> putting on a clinic in how not to use the Internet. Again, as I proclaimed my innocence, I cursed out the police. I cursed out the system. I cursed out her. I cursed everybody out. Zero accountability at the time. I then faced an aggressive prosecutor and DA's office in New York, who didn't seem so concerned with finding out the truth. They was trying to hang a nigga. They were going hard. I went to court for two years. I went through the same exact process that anybody else would go through. If a cop knocks on your door and says, hey, somebody said some things, please come with us. That's what occurred. I don't think that because I went through these things and was found innocent of all of these things. That that should omit me from having a voice and having something to say about predators, pedophilia and men who commit abuse on women. That's where this gets a little confusing for me. Um. That's where most of my uh that's where most of my feelings came from as I read as I read these lists. So I guess so I just I came away from all of that saying, well, god damn, man, well what system do we respect today? Again, I checked the boxes. I faced the judge, the judge threw it out. If we won't respect that system, the alleged victim came forward and spoke and exonerated me. If we won't respect that, clearly, if you look, if you have eyes and ears, I don't I don't behave the way that I used to behave. So we're not respecting reform. So what part are we going to respect? And then that's where this 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 movement gets cloudy a little bit. Because I need to separate the people that are actually invested in this past the tweet 
past your saying something and going on about your life from the people that's just bandwagoning because it's trendy from the people that are just hopping on trying to uh, demoralize another human being. That's totally different. I'm invested in this a different way because my life was nearly altered behind false allegations. I try not to say that because unfortunately there's no way for a man to defend himself against that without sounding insensitive to actual victims of these things. And that's what this is about. So when I read my name bunched up with this stuff, I think about the young lady. I think about the disrespect, how insensitive it is to her, her people, me, my fiance, my family, not to sound like Kevin Hart. At what point do we allow people to put any moment in time behind them? When you go through incidents like these, um, a restraining order is immediately placed um, as they try to figure out what happened. Um, so again, because there were restraining orders in place, I wasn't running to the internet to say, hey, the young lady and I are, are great, we're, we're fine, we're happy this is behind us, we were wrong, we apologized to each other, we had some different conversations at later times where we both figured that we, we just wilded out for a little bit, it was wrong, and we bugged. Nor do you owe that to the public. I want to make that part clear, too. Well, oh, apparently... That's where it's tricky. Yeah. yeah. That's where it's tricky, because you're right. My, my you, opinion. You don't... You do, kind of. You do? Yeah, you kind of do. I, I agree if, with if, what you're If you're, saying, you're a public mm-hmm. servant, right. which last week I just said we're all public servants, then you maybe owe it a little bit. Because there was a restraining order in place, I never got to say that I later spoke to my second accuser. And she had no idea. She, she was so shocked that her life was altered by her moment and in t- in her decision making in that time. She didn't anticipate that. See, those are the conversations we're not having. Sometimes people say things in a moment of anger and then they want nothing to do with that. Because it's not only someone else's life altered, it's theirs as well. And the lady back up off that. This is while the law is trying to get to the bottom of the law, is trying to lock niggas up. The law want fucking $100,000 in bail, but the law is on your ass. They not playing with y'all. <laughs> I never got to say any of this stuff. I never helped myself in these, in these instances. I don't think it's fair that my name is bunched up with people who have open cases, open investigations, people that have people that have victims who feel like they were silenced by certain institutions. None of that's happening. Like this cannot be an emotional movement. Sorry. It's very dangerous. I don't mean to be, I don't want to offend anybody. No, no. I I am certainly respectful of what's going on. No, but it's real. Niggas that know me know women are God's greatest creation to me. But we cannot be emotional. We have to be responsible in this moment of time with the power that we have. If not, it's, it's sheer hypocrisy. And we're guilty of the very same thing that we're accusing people of, which is abusing power and taking advantage of. And more importantly, we have to be very honest with each other in these situ- in these times and in situations like these. That honest communication, you know, and, and, and acceptance. Acceptance is important. I don't think a lot of people, are, you know, we don't move past a lot of shit because people don't accept their part and their role. And, and you know, what you, just, what you just said was finally, you know, accepting that, yes, I did things in my relationship that I caused a lot of shit. A lot of reaction. Well, therapy teaches you to keep it all on you. So while these accusations were flying more, you know, I never looked at, for me, and this and this hurt me at the time, but I never looked at, uh, damn, or damn, I always looked at it like, damn, why is all this stuff happening? I didn't do that. How could people believe that? And I never, it took therapy and intense therapy for me to look at it and say, who cares? Who cares? 
what part did I play in getting us both to this place where this occurred? Right. I think that's the part that some people miss. Right. But we can't be in this space where we allow, where we don't allow people to feel and to make mistakes. Sorry, as horrible as all of this sounds, it is a part of my journey. (laughs) It's a part of me realizing certain shit and growing up a little bit. Like, life is going to give all of y'all different things to teach us all different things. It's ma- it's what makes us us. <laughs> and my shit was fucked up. Right. Hey, if somebody come to you and tell you some some horrible shit that Joe did, some negative shit, what you should say is, "Well, when?" Mm. I ain't up. I ain't. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> but and, and I ain't than, holier than thou. Yeah, I'm gonna say deeper than that, Joe. You know, none of us are without sin, right? So it's like. We all yeah, do but shit and we go through let's shit. Let's level and out. You know? Like, once one rumor start, all the rumors start. Like, hey, he did this. He got her addicted to pills. He did this. Wait, wait, wait. Everybody relax. Everybody relax. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am so grateful that these conversations are able to be had today. Because another part that was missing in all of that was, and that was probably at, toward the, 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 the end of it, but I was a mental health case for at least 10 to 20 years at that time. Those conversations couldn't be had. You was a weirdo to say that. As a society, and that's why, you know, I try to highlight R. R Kelly and his abuser. Because as a society, we're negligent to people that are abused. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. abuse breeds abuse. (laughs) Right. Hurt breeds hurt. Victims victim like it's a cycle of shit. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not allowed to feel uncomfortable at the mere sight of my name by some of these allegations and mentions, then what is the purpose of the cause? And I'm not asking to be funny. I'm asking I'm asking like for enlightenment. Like there, there are real predators amongst us. The second that we have factual evidence against some of these niggas, know who going to be the first nigga to come on this platform and tell two million people per week? You fucking guessed it. Joe. Should Joe be banished? <laughs> like, tell me what, tell me what the pro- what protocol is here. I should be thrown thrown to the fucking side because I was young and didn't know how to deal with shit? <laughs> no, I don't think that's the motive. I don't think that's the goal. I don't think that's the objective. When that I, I don't even I don't even like to highlight that hypocrisy because I feel like the people that are involved with this movement, they're not dumb. You know I like the LA people say, hey, it's not it's not the LA people fucking up LA, it's y'all. <laughs> That's kind of that's kind of how how I feel about that. I'm off on a tangent here, so feel free to jump in. No, but it was it, no. It I was, think you covered but, yeah what you needed to cover. You, need, you needed to get that off, and I think it's an appropriate time. Um, but like I said, you know, it's time we reprogram our. I think we reprogram our thinking. Like it's cool for us to love our women. You know, it, it's cool for us to respect our women. It's cool for us to uplift our women. It, it, it's cool for us to support our women, and I think we got to get back into. A mindset of really walking and living by that. Well, I'm telling you that that's why my mind was down this rabbit hole more because as I was reading all these things, one of the things that stood out to me, and I never felt like this before, I never thought this was I was only reading this from black women. Right. Like it wasn't nobody else saying these horrible things about me, but black women. Mm-hmm. And that led me to the the underlining tension that does exist between Black men and black women about how black women feel that they've been treated by, by right. by black men. Right. Like I'm, my mind has been, but this has been a heavy week, man. <laughs> but that's why I said, it, you know, it, it, I would have never expected, you know, this narrative, this this conversation to come from this docu series. Like I, I think that you know, it's 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 healthy. Conversation is healthy. 
I think that it helps people grow. It helps people move on and, and you know, deal with shit in their lives and expose things and just bring shit to the forefront that may be holding them back and that may be affecting them in ways that they're not even aware of. Like, when you sit down and have conversation, I think we was, we was talking about this in private before, sometimes, like, a lot of issues are only issues because lack of just a conversation. A simple conversation would resolve all of that. And I think that, you know, moving forward, we just need to, to keep that in mind because it's easy for us to, you know, talk about this now and in two weeks and in three weeks we don't even think about this shit no more because something else will have happened by then. But I think we have to do our best to keep this in mind moving forward that we need to reprogram the way we think and the way we treat women and the way we, you know, just, just move about in our daily lives. Just we have to... We have to change a lot of things. A lot of things were handed down to us, generational. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times, we can't expect the world to change and then our thinking be the same. Or our thinking be the same that was handed down to us. We have to change the way that we we think and that we, we, you know, our relationships with our women in our lives. And not just women that you're in a, 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 a romantic relationship. I'm just talking about women in general, period. We have to we have to change the way we think and we act and and we treat our women in our society. We have to. I agree. Yeah, totally agree. That's the best thing. This whole docu series and everything surrounding it and the Me Too movement is hopefully growth as a human. Well, what I learned from watching that doc is not only the Me Too movement. There are so many different movements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. Some not as publicized as, as others, but there are a lot of places for people to go to and, and I mean, get right. Yeah. Yeah. And and to piggyback off what, what you said, Joe, it has been unfortunate with this, too, to see the Me Too movement just trying to catch this trendy online shit. To your point of it's not the people in L.A., it's the people that are coming in to fuck it up. It falls back to that social media attention thing. I think people... The Me Too movement is made up of women that have been abused. They've been through this for years. There's evidence. There's all these things that they've had to live through. This cancel culture takes a 30-second clip that they see online with no context and adds it into a pile of people that have gone through a lot of abuse over the past God knows how many years. Well, that, well, so that's, that's why I'm trying to have the conversation because past canceling someone, what is the next step? See, some people are only going to say... Hey, he did that. Cancel them. There's mm. so much more to be done. But I almost feel like <laughs> yeah. it's almost in this weird, sick, selfish way when people do some of that cancel culture shit because it's not for the moral reasons of what they say it is. It's, hey, I'll probably get a lot of attention if I, quote, expose this person for a two-second clip with no context at all because that's what everyone else is talking about. It has nothing to do with the women that were actually in that documentary that are part of the Me Too movement. We're all morally <laughs> sound until we go home. Hmm. Fair. Like, what else are we going to see here? What I will say is, I am shocked at the amount of people that are still riding with Robert. Yeah, I mean, they're still it's out disturbing. there. Disturbing. Every day, every day, I have a, someone tweeting me, "Nah, you got, you can separate the music from the man." And I'll, you know, da -da -da. I had tweets of people calling uh, us pussies. Yeah. Well, I'm pussy. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> siding like y'all are just siding with women. Y'all are pussy. Right. Like, like uh, Jesus Christ. It, yeah. Really? That's that what you grasp pussy, out of that? Pussy, yeah. Well, that's another reason that these conversations are, is so great that they're being had because men are really telling you how sick they are. Yeah. Like, ladies, you don't have to do much investigative work. Right. Like, men speaking about this lone topic, they tell you exactly where their respect level is for women and how they feel about women. Um... I was watching somebody who I, I shall not name, who I have felt for a little while now has just had zero respect for women. And his whole stance is, yeah, I totally understand R. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Man, these little chicks were fast. Come on, man. <laughs> like, the subtext in, in some of the things that men are saying is, is intolerable. It's difficult to read. It's difficult to bear. And again, it's been a really heavy week for me. I have watched this docu series nine times, uh, each part. <laughs> yeah, showing a bunch of different people. It's always interesting to see the men that speak on this uh, situation that don't have daughters. I think that's interesting. I think I've seen a lot of guys, you know, social media jump out there and say some things, 
And I'm like, damn, like that's how you feel about this? And then don't, you start looking at them, you're like, oh, he don't he don't have no kids or he has a son, or two sons or three sons. I don't I don't have any I don't have any daughters, but I have a mom. And yeah. that's my other thing. <laughs> I don't like, have any why, why people don't Yeah, because, I, got a, I got a sister. Yeah, right. but you know what it is? Because people don't it if it if it doesn't directly affect them. You know, it's kind of like uh, that yeah. Ain't so my sister, that I ain't saw my a lot cousin, of people saying that about Sparkle. They 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 were saying, "Oh, you was cool with with him doing this to anybody else, but once it was your niece, mm. you know, you had a lot of guilt that you harbored." Right, right. Yeah, it's it's a messy situation, man. It, it's it's messy. Um, Savon just showed me a report that said Atlanta's thinking about filing filing charges or invest. Uh, oh, R. Kelly report. Uh, R. Kelly reportedly under investigation in Georgia for possible criminal charges. Listen, if I'm watching that doc, it's mad times to get that nigga while he was uh, crossing state lines. Mm. Yeah. With, yeah. With, with with minors. Yeah. So this doesn't have to just be an an state Atlanta thing. thing. He he vacated though the the premises when it got hot over there when the reports came out he set up shops somewhere different. Uh, this is not solely an Atlanta thing. If we do some digging, I did, I told you last week I feel like they're gonna get him. Yeah, well I mean they, even they, the, the two girls him. he flew out to LA like that's already trafficking right there. The, the last well, recent two outside of uh, Jocelyn Savage like the one that was on the actual doc yeah uh, they say here prosecutors reportedly claim they already have one woman ready to testify so they feel very strongly that they have a case already this is without questioning any of the women that were in that documentary wow good uh, I feel like in the future women and young men will come forward I hope so I hope so this is this is a positive thing even though it's hard to digest and hard to watch and hard to stomach and hard to um, apply to your own life and realize that that thing type of thing may be happening or have happened to people that you love, mm -hmm. but it's it's something that we need to do. It's important. Okay, was that was that responsible? Was that a responsible ninety minutes? I think it was. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think it was a, a healthy ninety minutes. Okay, good. I would play outstanding, but I'm not. It's 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Switching up on us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both played at the barbecue. And this is outstanding 1B. What? This is outstanding part B. <laughs> it's yeah. true. Yeah. That's all it is. This it is outstanding part B. When I was th thinking about making the switch, I was like, oh, shit. You can let that rock until he says... <laughs> and then, and then cut it off. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Already tell, in a better mood. Tell, tell me that's not a body. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel better already. Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of music, our girl was spotted back in the studio. What's our Rihanna prediction? We got fire. timing. What's going fire, on? Fire, well, fire, no, we know that fire. part. We back to the jokes. <laughs> we back to the jokes. She was spotted back on mute. I can see her. She stays. She stays on mute in yeah. the studio. Why, why would she privy us to that information? Rihanna is. Can I get a note? Can I get like an A flat? Nah, <laughs> nah, fam. You get it when the world get it. Yep. Uh, I th I could see her dropping though in spring sometime. Yeah. And I th and I think that uh uh J Cole, you know, he's been in the studio with other producers. Wait, slow down. We get into that. Yeah, yeah. That's I was what say, that's I really hate how y'all segue. <laughs> I thought we was in the music. Why, why you don't learn from me? I thought we. <laughs> Yo, 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 you're not being produced. You're right. My, my bad. I ain't being Come produced. On, I thought we saw my music. You got a hoodie with a we, face, we, and you won't be produced. We ain't got. We ain't, we ain't got nothing really to talk about Rihanna. We don't. We ain't hear nothing. Well, when do y'all think the album's coming? I have plenty to say about Rihanna. <laughs> y'all don't ever get into the psychology of records. Sometimes it depends on the artist. Okay, so listen. Do to we this. need Frankie Beverly and Maze again? Oh no, my bad. Here we go. Oh my god. Come Sometimes on. you just hear records, man. I'm gonna play this record. I'm, I'm gonna play this record because the Queen is coming, man. I bet. I believe. I was gonna say. I think that one's pretty <laughs> straightforward. <laughs> I believe. I believe her. I know, but let's. Get I don't. Rihanna doesn't but, have lying but, eyes. But, but like when you, eyes no. But when you get into the thinking of it, like sex is supposed to be about the other person like the brain of the woman that's walking in the room and telling you mm -hmm. that sex with her <laughs> is so amazing is amazing <laughs> if there's one girl that can get that off I'm gonna let Rihanna get that one off actually I, I think she's giving everyone and if sex not I, if not I'm willing to find out if she's telling the truth y'all ever bumped into that girl 
the, the girl is just extra with telling you how great her Absolutely. sex is. Oh, it's, it's, like, usu- oh, it's usually oh, trash. God. Yeah, it is. It's usually trash, oh, but in this those. case, I'm not. Yeah. I'm going to roll with Rihanna on this one. Yeah. Well, no, I don't Rih- think she's one of those girls. Rihanna, we believe. Yeah, I believe yeah. Rihanna. I'm talking about the rest of them. Yeah. <laughs> they be lying. Oh, my head is crazy. There's always the my head is crazy girl. <laughs> you get the head. Oh, my Any girl that just holds a timeline right. on a Wednesday at 3 p.m. trying to tell me about her box. Oh, yeah. It's probably can't be that good. My head is yeah. crazy. You get the head and you find out it's mad sane. <laughs> <laughs> like, that head is crazy sane. Like, there's nothing crazy about that head. How convenient is that? <laughs> wow. No sane head. How convenient no, her head is, is crazy. fucking Literally dead. her head. Yeah. Well, you got to judge women that are telling you how great their head is. So you got to judge them? Yeah. And... See, I'm I'm telling you, I'm gonna bring some chicks in here one day. But the the, 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 the distinguished chicks are gonna say that we shouldn't be speaking to women who are telling us how great their head is on a Wednesday because we're too old for that. I'm, I'm too old to talk about how great a woman's head is. Or how no, you too old to deal with the woman that's talking about how great her head is on a Wednesday afternoon. They might have that's a point. True, yeah. They may have a point. Yeah. I'm all mm-hmm. mad. I'm all slow out here, though. Yeah, all, you got to take that hoodie no, off. No, I'm not mad. I'm just trying to think about that. You got to take like, that hoodie what? off if you're going to be mad. I'm not mad. No, you can't, not be, at all. can't have the deep hoodie on and be mad. No, the I ain't deep mad. hoodie. <laughs> Do I do that? Griselda going to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> the deep hoodie is funny. Uh, hold up, man. Let me grab my fucking phone and see what's going on. All the Golden Globes. Uh, you know. <laughs> Come on, Parks. They, uh, that was your thing. You know, no, I'm that t- now you want to act cool. No, I said that it wasn't much to happen. It was cool. So that, that's your scathing hot take. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Golden Globes was cool this year. Cool. Why do people listen to this podcast? I don't know. Well, why do y'all? Why do y'all do a podcast? <laughs> like not to tell people stuff. Y'all, y'all don't say shit. <laughs> I mean, do you have any you know, scathing hot takes from go- Golden Globes? Yes. Yeah, I told you in pre-production. <laughs> I told I told you in the kitchen. See, whenever <laughs> pre-production was real. <laughs> Whenever I hear pre-production regarding this show, I just start laughing. Like, told you pre-production. Where's pre-production at? Right there. Okay. Yeah. Right by the stove. For about two seconds. Right there. By the stove. Um, my Golden Globes take was they did the whole diversify audience thing with the Asian host and uh, the other host. I think the host. The white guy. I think the host didn't do the greatest, the greatest job. I felt like that they were doing that sarcastically. Well, but it, probably Andy because Sandberg, they couldn't do it. Andy well, Samberg's comedic thing is sarcasm. Yeah, awesome. Didn't connect. <laughs> <laughs> didn't catch the sarcasm. I, I know what they the were sarcasm. trying to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we never talk about that. Like uh, sometimes the sarcasm just don't don't. That's true. Don't connect, That's man. I think, I think we're hosting too. Like you're going to the all of America here. Just. Be straight funny. Take man. it easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. you trying to do all this intelligent Dark, shit witty to, humor. to impress your other comedic friends. Yeah, like they they uh, probably announced not. the announce the next coming announcer with like fil- false uh, credits and shit like. Yeah, that. you're trying yeah, you're like, trying to impress the stand up comedians. Yeah, Dog, you're seemed, talking at the middle America here. Yeah, <laughs> seemed rushed. It seemed uh, just didn't seem like they were ready to get the job done, which is fine. Uh, we've all been there before. Uh, my scathing hot take came. When in that room full of amazing talent, amazing writers, amazing actors, actresses, the two hosts that were bombing decided to include Jim Carrey from the audience. And Jim Carrey stole the room. And, as, as Jim Carrey. And I said to myself, would. why on God's green earth did two hosts that are bombing try to include one of the greatest brains of, uh, <laughs> of Hollywood? Uh, get this off me to a genius. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, take yeah, it I, away. Don't, I don't think that came off right though. I don't. <laughs> I wasn't giving them props for that. <laughs> oh, they handed it off. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's, and that's definitely nah. not what they planned to do. Yeah, the dope pass off and a relay don't ever get credit. Like, yeah, I grabbed, I the grabbed track, the baton bro, but... and, and I ran <laughs> fast. <laughs> Look how Joe break it down. I grabbed the baton and I ran. That's fast That's important because if you fumble the handoff, that's true. You have no chance. You have no shot. Trust Absolutely. me, I was real big on that relay race thing. Absolutely, that was your that was your event. Parks. I'm just curious. You have, don't say event to me. <laughs> <laughs> you was get, getting it in at Lincoln Park on the relay. Have, don't say event. I don't me. have an event. I know Rory used to run <laughs> oh, track. Oh fuck, so. man! Yo, some of the fans say say I need to look at Rory more. So I'm I'm trying to do it, but it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything is in. That's why I've never taken offense to it. Everything is in that area, so I'm just like, eh, yo, go Parks ahead. is Y'all can over here. Mall is here. The computer is here. His music. Monch is here somewhere. Yeah, Monch is here. <laughs> yeah, like it's fucking Monch is here for sure. Yeah, but I'm looking at Rory, man. No, it's cool. You could look over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad that I'm looking at you Rory good. and I still can't see his pocket. 
Come on, man. Give me a little Rasta quarter pocket. angle. That's there the you go. Rasta Come on. This is how I have to stay for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like I dislo- Rasta pocket. Like I Rasta dislocated pocket. my shoulder. Safari pocket head ass. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is from the Safari line. Oh, man. Let me see. All right. What else is happening? Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we could stay with music. Uh, Rick Ross tried to tease us. I didn't like that. Give me my phone. I'm going to call Just Blaze right now. Give me my phone. That's a good Give idea. For those that don't know, Rick Ross tweeted Just Blaze don't said, be answering. Yo. Just, it's Just Birthday. Okay, never really? mind. Yeah. Y'all can oh, just so talk about his birthday. Answering. Yeah, he's definitely not answering. I was trying to inform the viewers on what we're talking about. Oh, go. Carry on. Rick Ross tweeted Just Blaze said, can someone tell Just Blaze thank you even though he added him in it? And then after that tweet, he said, hey, someone tell Justice League as well. I said, thank you. So the two... I would say my favorite producers with Rick Ross, he thanked. All the producers are your favorite. <laughs> For Ross, no, I'm going with Justice Nap- League. Neptunes, just... Dre, Shaw Money. <laughs> Shaw got good beats. Yeah. Same. Um, it's your favorite. <laughs> now, with Ross, though, Justice League and Just Blazer would be my two favorites. That's that's fair. Bink, no Bink ID would be had up a there. couple, though. That's true. I was waiting for him to tweet Bink. Yeah. Are you going to call Justice on his birthday? Yeah, if I could figure out how to work my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That Versace would face is taking up too much space. There we go. Now, Jess doesn't answer me normally, so I certainly don't expect him to <laughs> on answer his birthday. On, on his birthday. Drilly, what up? <laughs> Just Blaze, First this brain. is Joe Budden from the Joe Budden Podcast. How are I you? Just said, I and just said Joey, what up? I know who it is. His I, I, I know, but I have to inform you that we're live on my podcast. We're live so recording you don't... right now, I, I figured. Oh. I have a couple. No, no, no. Of, I have a couple quick questions. I don't want to hold you. I saw you. Okay. I saw you and Rick Ross tweeting to each other, and that was an event for me because I'm a hip hop savant. Uh, okay. And I know that savant. you open up the special folder for Ross. How dope is this beat? <laughs> oh, you are. Uh, <laughs> that's a great question. That's a really good question. Yeah, you um, you known to do some Lord knows ish type of things with just Bla- I mean, uh, with Rick Ross. Uh, yeah. Um, you played him a folder. You wouldn't play other rappers. That's that's, that's true. true and Don't lie. True. Don't lie. I'm gonna no, tell you this. I feel like, I feel like this might be. I feel like Matter this might fact, be tied you know, in. You know what I'm gonna tell you? You know what I'm gonna tell you? And I'm gonna be 100. Are we live? Are we recording right now? Yes, yes, yes. yes. We're live. Yes. So Great. watch your words. You heard this beat and passed on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if you get the fuck out of here. <laughs> all right, so that means it's a beat that Paul didn't pay for. That's all that means. <laughs> no, 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 no that's, that's not what that means because I got paid for all those beats. All right, so my second question to you. Uh, I just celebrated my child's one-year-old birthday. I remember calling you when he wasn't born yet saying, yo, you should give me a beat so like I could talk about how and much I, I love my I kid. Had the beat. You we passed on it. Get the choir together, and I never heard back from you. It's after just that. Blaze always want a choir, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it tends to work for him. No, yeah. you said you was getting the choir though. And no, I, I, but, I, hey, wait, Joe God, doesn't damn it. Have choirs. I, I, I said I'm going to get the choir, but we have to pay for the choir. I'll pay. I got money. I got money. Now you got money, so you pay for the choir now. Yeah, I don't like that now. I tried to omit the now. <laughs> they can't omit the now. Podcasting, podcasting pays well. Uh, it, it's pretty good. You should let me produce uh, the Just Blaze podcast. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> all right, real quick, I just want to say, uh, all right. So I'm glad to w- top five Just Blaze beats. Do you think that Pump It Up is in there? Because I oh. saw people going around with a list today. And I was kind of offended. <laughs> I ain't oh, seen Pump It Up. Now, I thought it should be highlighted that at the time, niggas wasn't running to you for their first single. Not true. I should get credit. Come on, Just. I, I don't get no credit for coming to you and saying, yo, I need that smash. You was doing oh. whole albums. All right, so look. So I don't know that it's necessarily top five beats. I think it's top five songs. I agree probably. with that. Did you see Stick Something Art? I agree with that. I mean, what's the name of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> you got served? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I agree, with, I agree with Jess. Movies. I agree with Yo, that. That's the thing is, every time that song comes on in the movie, my mother catches it and calls me like, hey, guess what's playing? <laughs> Joe's oh, mom too. Those songs. I wish I would have got more public. Joe calls <laughs> too when that song plays. Anyway. <laughs> Joe calls oh, wait, all his wait, friends. So, this is another thing. So you, you only make 20000 a year for Pump It Up? Yes, today, today. That's in year 16. Huh. Right. Just got the so better splits to... there. <laughs> Roy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because I feel like our splits were even on that because Cool and the Gang had to get their money. Yes. And yes. we split the rest 50-50. Yes. yes, exactly. But I feel like 
but I feel like I've seen more than that. <laughs> Joe got a call. This, <laughs> this year? Oh, well, wait. Oh, now I remember. You thugged me out of a higher percentage. <laughs> no, I, I, def- no, I definitely did not. Well, no. Not. Misa, some <laughs> whoever the fuck was managing. The only, time, the only time that that happened was with old boy. You got a higher percentage off old boy? Yeah. That is robbery. <laughs> no, you shouldn't have got a fucking because coin. No, nah, because the way that happened was Cam rushed it to the radio, and had he just waited, we were going to remove the sample, but he didn't. Mm. So the fact that the sample took a lot, so I was like, hey, if you had given me an extra day, wow. we would have just removed the sample, and we would have we would have been in the free. Free and clear, hundred percent. Yeah, but then you might have compromised. You might have compromised. Kind of glad y'all left it though. Yeah, yeah, you might have compromised the record. <laughs> oh wait, here's one, Just. I got one for you, and I Go need ahead. you. To, I need you to be honest here, and I'm gonna leave you okay. alone. Recently, uh, Rory Maul and myself, uh, we were we, well, actually Maul and myself, we were talking to Hove about the Pump It Up remix, and right. Hove Hove swore to his heart that he was not dissing me at all. That's it. I don't believe him. <laughs> That's what he said. He, he said it was more so t- about Just, I think, like fucking with Just. Like, because he didn't, you know what I'm saying? He was like, give me that beat, fool. He's talking to Just. <laughs> He's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> see, that part I've never heard before. But I will tell you this. And I don't know if, I, if you and I have ever had this conversation. We haven't. Uh, um, <laughs> so I'm going to give you a rundown of the history of Pump It Up. Real quick, some parts you are obviously were there for, some parts you were not. One of the greatest songs ever. Um, I make I, I made that Stream beat while that. Jay was doing. Um, I don't normally use this word anymore, but nigga, please from the Blueprint Two. Mm. Okay, great record. Um, Jay was doing that with Pharrell in one room. Um, at baseline, so I made, I was making that beat in the B room. I heard it. I knew it was a smash. I called him in, I, you know, I called him into the room and said, yo, come listen to this. He heard it and was like, all right, yeah, but I'm going to do this uh, Pharrell record. I'll be back. Damn, shit it on you. Never saw me. Never saw me. <laughs> shit it on Just. Right? <laughs> yo, I'm going to go talk to Pharrell, uh, Just Blaze. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> so, so then uh, we go to L.A. and we're working on... It, State Property was already out, and obviously Rock the Mic was the big record from State Property. So I don't remember whose project or why we were there, but we, all of us, well, all of us meaning me and all of State Property, were living in L.A. for a while. This was, I think this was the trip, the trip where Ye had the car crash when he was in L.A. The alleged car crash. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I, I don't <laughs> <laughs> but the trip where that happened, um, uh, we were in LA working and I brought that pump it up beat. I brought the beat back up, added a few extra things to it, but still working on it. And, um, you know, freeway at the time would literally rap on anything that I would ever give him. Um, so he was ready to round to it. Beans was very high and was like, nah. <laughs> and I envisioned it as the follow up to rock the mic. That's why I brought up state property. So then a bunch of random, like, Young West Coast dudes, like second and third and fourth generation dog pound guys that like you, you might smoked. remember, you know, like they were <laughs> all gang members. You mean <laughs> they were all in the studio and they started writing rhymes to it. And I'm like, nah. Oh, yeah, so smoke I turned the beat off and I start making <laughs> oh, uh, Blueprint Two. Then, <laughs> then, me, then me and you're in the studio. And I was making a beat. I didn't like it. You didn't like it. Deaded it. Put on the pump it up beat. You were like, what's that? And we did what we did. Two months later, I'm in the studio with Jay. And he's like, yo, that Joe Button joint is is fresh. But like next time you make something like that, play it for me first. That's funny. I feel like that about this show me what you got beat. <laughs> and he was, and I'm like, but I, I feel did. like you made that beat for me, really. Um, or, no, that was made with Jay Ma. Show me what was definitely made with no, Jay no, Ma. Listen, I know I wasn't important enough for that. To be. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or for I'm telling you in my head. <laughs> but Jay said to me, "Play it for me first next time." And I said, "But I did." You told me you wanted to go hang out with Pharrell. Mm. Hey, so, funny you say that. Wait, hold up. This is this is my last question that I need an honest answer to from you. Yeah. Whose Pharrell beats do you pick, Hoves or Norries? 
Who got oh, the one, better this, Pharrell catalog? Jay, I mean, they have that much more of a catalog. Oh, you he have with Nori? He has, oh, you don't even has, know what he had with Nori. You no, know I'm saying he has Super Thug and he has um. Oh no, what else? Oh no, uh, niggas on the run Eden. Uh, what's the name of oh, Homeboy? And, and I came to party. What was the name of that record? Nothing. That's nothing. That was nothing. Like shit. Yeah, what that's are you talking it. about? That's it. That's that's big records though. <laughs> you know how records. many records Pharrell and he got a few. Had? No, he has a few more records than that. He Tell had, me how many right. records Hov and Pharrell had. All right, let's let's go, let's go through the list. Change clothes, F all night. Nori wins. Um, Allure. Nori wins. Oh, that's Allure. different. Jay wins. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to love you. Um, all right, hold, hold on. Yeah. Let's keep going. Um, yeah, you're so biased. Nigga, please. <laughs> um, Nigga, please. Which like like which we just said is a great record. Um. Oh, there's more that I'm forgetting. There's a lot more that All I'm All right, we're, break, we're breaking my rule. Yeah, I was trying not to talk about holes. Oh, what? Excuse me, miss? Ape shit. Excuse me, miss you Remix? Go All right, we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> hey, just, uh, hey Yo. just, th- thank you. Uh, and at some point, I'm still going to want that beat with the choir, nigga. Hit me, hit, hit me tomorrow. I'm, 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 I'm traveling. I mean, today's the birthday. I'm so traveling, man. Hit me tomorrow. You're happy birthday, man. Oh, birthday, yeah, happy just. birthday, Just. Yeah, round Appreciate of applause. It. Thanks, Just. Enjoy your birthday, man. No doubt. All right, shout out to Just Blaze. For sure. Go Just. <laughs> Go Just. Stunt yeah. real quick. Yeah, all that shit was a stunt. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I, I hear Just voice, I hear Hov saying, Dame made millions, Just made millions. <laughs> <laughs> Hov made millions, B made millions. Like, yeah. God damn, all right. Joe, I wanted, Joe I wanted, if he wasn't in his feelings. I wanted to ask him about the, the, the silent little beef that him and Kanye had back then at Baseline. Like he, would, they, he wouldn't have said that. Like they was battling for like placements. He, he would have said it he was just he healthy competition. They were pushing each yeah, other. You know that's what he would have said. You know, Just. Come yeah. on. I, I was there. <laughs> just <laughs> just <laughs> face with the dre- just with the dreads. <laughs> nah, B. Just just, hey, just with the dreads like, didn't he, give a fuck about Kanye, my nigga. Kanye. He was a little confused. Control, yeah. Yeah. He wasn't feeling Kanye being up at baseline yeah. every day while he was there. Broke yeah. that yeah. Sega over his head. Yeah. Fuck that. Who wins in a beat battle? Kanye, Just. Bink or Justice League? Uh, okay, so is the beat battle going to be them playing records or just beats? And are they new beats or old beats? Is it their catalog that we're debating? That's here? what I'm saying. Like, or just gonna, no, be no, like no records, no records, just beats. beats. New uh, beats, unheard beats, exclusive beats. Man, who wins? Just beats. Just either just or Justice League. I think. Uh, just a uh, bink. No disrespect. I think Just beats Justice League. Um, I don't know. Because Justice League stuff Justin, is so I mellow. I think Justin Bink beat both of them. If we talking about, yeah, I'm about to say, I don't hear y'all saying Bink enough. I just said Bink. No, okay. I said Just a bink. bink. I think all these guys just are incredible for what it's worth. Yeah, but, but we talking about beats? Let's call Bink. <laughs> bink a curse your ass. I was going to say, <laughs> do we so. really want to do that? What? I don't think so. Yo, yo, are you crazy? Well, if he does, he okay, does. Okay, you must have you must have spoke to Bink. Recently. I didn't, but I mean, if he cursed me out, he should curse. Me. Whatever, oh, yeah. he's like, definitely, he's definitely, I, I can be cursed right, out. Well, okay, well, go well on. now I'm curious. Well, now <laughs> I want to know. Well, y'all talk. Yo, y'all want to take? A, yo, y'all want to take a little friendly bet? That what? That he gets cursed out right here? That he don't answer? No, that he I, I'm gonna answer. go with he doesn't answer. Yeah, I'm gonna go with he doesn't. If he you know? does answer, he's gonna say, "Yo, you owe me money." <laughs> so, but is Joe gonna get cursed out for movies? He'll curse. Yes, is Joe gonna get cursed out? But the person who called your voicemail box that has not been set That's up That's a curse yet. out. You blocked. Yeah. You blocked. Goodbye. I hate when goodbye. they say goodbye. I hate goodbye. when they say goodbye to me. You're blocked. Don't say goodbye to me. Yeah. Be a nice. It's, goodbye. Nah, it's, okay, it's finish your podcast. No, it sounds goodbye. condescending. I don't like it. I don't like it automatively. But the person you called has a... Damn. Damn. Don't try it twice. He's probably traveling. Don't yeah. do that. He's probably traveling. He's probably traveling. He's, traveling. He's, He's in the tra- air. Traveling for my call. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get away He's from the my air. call. He's in the air. I wanted to ask him what he thought He uh, what he what thought about that beat battle, that hy- hypothetical beat battle. He's going to say him. I will say that Justice League finishes Of course their... he's going to say him. He's going to say him, and, and, and he might not be that far off. As someone who's heard all their like two tracks and shit, like what they come up with, Yeah, I w- Justice yeah. League shits be sounding finished. Yeah, I was just about to say, Justice League, they use so many uh, instrumentation and just... It's, it's too, just... too movie-esque is yeah. why I think they I also lose. add in the uh, words beat be battle. In beat battle, it's if some of that melodic shit's not really gonna, yeah, gonna win in fair. a beat battle. That's I'm thinking a beat battle. I agree with that. <laughs> that's fair. And that's why I said Bink. If we're talking about just beat, yeah, and to all the Kanye stands, we think he's a great producer, but nah, I just I don't take away all what I think about his personal life. I don't think he fares great, well in that. Great music, like records, yeah. great records, exactly. Sure. Yeah, 
Um, I don't think we should do a, a podcast without highlighting Centoya Centoya Brown's release. Mm. Um, I'm getting her name correct. Yes, Savon. Yeah. Yeah. Centoya. See, that's why I like Savon. <laughs> See, Pronunciation. He on his shit now. No, it's Centoya. He see all them people trying to come for his job. <laughs> and, and, and my mentor. Yo, like, somebody emailed me. They like, yo, Savon can't Google? Yeah. <laughs> like, yo, I got y'all. What, what y'all need? <laughs> I can Google. Yeah, the problem is I love Savon, so we're going to keep him still. Yo, somebody, somebody emailed me. This is the subject Savon trash. <laughs> yo, where do I apply? Guarantee I can assure y'all will always have clips daily. There's no, there's no content you guys won't have that I can't make in one second. Say on, man, you gotta go. I'm sorry. You make it clips in one second, yeah. and then he said, then he. You ends don't it, do it in one second. Then he ends it with, secondly, everything will be worth researched as y'all say it. Mm. He going to research as we say it, Tip. Hold up, man. <laughs> he in his research as we yeah. say it, bag. Wow, how convenient is fucking that? Uh, say on, it makes Yo, you feel any better. I did block the email just because hey. I don't like people that just have my email. Hey, per- perspective, save on. He also took the time to thoroughly read it, and you know Rory can't read. That's true. So <laughs> that is very true. What does that tell you? That's he, a he, fact. The, Rory was trying to hire the kid. Tell, tell, yeah, tell Rory. <laughs> I reply back like, yo, tell send me your resume. Up, yeah, tell him to open up the reply, the reply box, though. <laughs> well, I just don't understand why Savon does this job while living in Boston. <laughs> Wait, Savon lives in Boston? in Boston? Yes, he does. <laughs> that just means yeah, Joe's Boston is like another part of Jersey. <laughs> Wait, Savon has lived in Boston this whole time? Yeah. Tell him I'm in Westchester. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're, not. <laughs> you're, you're far away. <laughs> in Boston. You can't help us this way. Um. All right. What else has happened? There's been. Uh. Do we care about the Nikki, Nikki and Meek Spice Awards? No. Toxic there, femininity. There, there, there's been some spice. What happened? It's one side. I'm throwing it. it to Barb Mall. <laughs> yeah. Ball. ball. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joe is stupid. Yo, man. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna be honest, man. I, y'all know how how much I love Nikki, man. But it's just. Yeah, man, it might be time to just come off that Nikki train. As much as I love Nikki, but it's just it's too much shit going on. It's kind of like so disappointing, so disappointing with her, where events have taken her. I'm gonna be honest, and I love Nikki. Y'all know I love Nikki. Shit is funny, man. Nikki's talking about she's gonna expose somebody's secrets. It's like, yo, man. Once the guy's changed, we, we don't care. <laughs> like, yeah, and everyone like, loves him right now. We, so I guarantee we you, we love just, Meek. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy how People fast times change. Into- Meek was in that relationship, and he was the underdog. She was the beloved one. She sold all the records yeah. for him. She was, you know, she gave him the visibility, mm. and he got it now. Yeah. Without her, uh, even more so than her, probably some would say. Yeah. Where do we? Where do we I think they owe us a messy breakup, though. <laughs> it was. It was slightly <laughs> messy. No, no, not messy enough for me. <laughs> I want to see more mess. That's why the people say we're a gossip podcast now. No, that's why I say that. <laughs> oh, you're, you're the people. You're the people. <laughs> you are the people. I'll yeah, I don't it. know, man. I, I just, you know, it, it's just disappointing to see where Nikki, the events have gone. It's... Nikki, don't release Meek secrets. It's going to backfire. Don't. Yeah, please don't do that. And don't, I, don't. And I don't even want to know his secrets. Yeah, yeah, no. Like, Meek got wild secrets. He's from Philly. <laughs> if, <laughs> like, if he's saying someone's spitting in his mouth and that's not a secret, war, so I don't even want to know Meek, yeah, <laughs> what the secrets are. Keep that shit between him, O'Malley, the squad. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm cool. I'm Nikki, cool, Nick. Man. But what I did wonder, because they both brought in New Year's Eve at Liv. Now, Liv is large enough to where you can be there with your ex very, and, very and, and not see that person. But sure. I don't know, man. Nikki also tweeted that she misses Queen Radio. Uh, well, she said I, she said it's coming. I correlate and, that. Uh, she I said she has back. some messiness coming with it mm-hmm. at oh, the same man. time. She which, so I, I wish she would get away from More that. More or less. I wish yes. she, but I wish she stopped that. She can, do, she can do Queen Radio and body it without... Addressing anything yeah. without without being messy toward anybody. Class. She, mm-hmm. Yeah, she she can do it. Yeah. She, she has the stature. She has the audience. She can do it. And also said in the first five episodes that hey, this isn't going to be a messy radio show. Yeah. This is just because this is happening at this moment, and then it disappeared when no messiness happened. Which goes back to her having a good year as far as music goes and a solid album, and then just ruining it with antics instead. So none of us paid attention to her good album. We just looked at all this bullshit that she's doing. Yeah. Seems like 2019 isn't changing much. Well, she's in a gang now, so she's feeling empowered. Yeah. You better chill out, Meek. 
<laughs> Chill out, me. <Mika. laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Um, all right, so give me your opinion on let's see more spice awards. Oh boy, oh, this who the spice this awards? Our who, who do you think is winning the spice awards between Curry and Harden? <laughs> well, Curry, uh, Curry is spicier. Uh, come on, come on. Let me look at Rory. That was a double entendre. You need realize. Don't that. ask. Don't ask me how. Okay, I was just double checking. <laughs> yeah, just tell that them. You, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Curry would win that spice. No, I think so. Kurt. <laughs> you just so. got it? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We'll work on colors tomorrow, Joe. Don't worry. <laughs> Yo, why does Rory say those types of jokes? Like, Rory's a fucking idiot. Curry would be spicy. Let me see that pocket. <laughs> he pulled that joke out of that pocket? Definitely out of that pocket. Joke pocket? Yeah, why nigga that don't wear that pocket can't make that joke, man? <laughs> Rory has so much sauce. Yeah. Um, what did you talk about? Oh, Curry and, uh, Curry and Harden. Harden. Uh, yes, Rory. Curry would be spicier than Harden. <laughs> I wouldn't want to eat anything Harden. <laughs> like, what the fuck is the Rory talking about? I wouldn't want to eat yeah, anything like, Harden. Harden versus some curry shit. Yeah. yeah. Curry, curry make anything great. Curry shrimp, curry chicken, That's true. Curry, goat, curry goat, curry rice, what? curry Tell me another oxtail, time you eat goat. curry lasagna, <laughs> curry, <laughs> curry, lasagna. <laughs> curry, curry mac good. and cheese. Listen, some of these new age chefs, they're trying to freak it. Ooh, the curry chicken mac and cheese. Yeah, I no. call it the curry crack and cheese. Listen, <laughs> listen. I want mac and cheese yeah. over here Retweet. and curry chicken over here. Hey, that's all I ask Don't for. mix my hey, shit together. Hey, and I'm going to be full. Yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> um, uh, that is a travel. Yeah, it yeah. is. So why Which is not time? A, so why how come it's not a travel when Harden does it? <laughs> it's it, it's in the 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 motion that James does it. It kind of looks like a hop step, but it is a travel. No, it don't. <laughs> it, <laughs> it looks like a travel. <laughs> no, but, but if you it look at like it, you can't take there. two step backs. You can't no, step you can't. back no, and that, you didn't no, get no, enough no. space, that, so you step back again. No, that that <laughs> particular one you told him about was one thousand. Good offense. That's what he does every he, game. Nah, he don't, he don't, oh, he don't you, do that no, every time. Nah. Uh, that was that. You trying to go to dream and no, eat no, wings no, with James? No, I'm not. <laughs> that that one Chill. that one travel was that was crazy though. But I think a lot of the times I don't. I think the refs get caught up in watching the game like we do sometimes. Though. They forget they're officiating the game because <laughs> they when, should stop doing that. No, because that that Kevin Durant out of bounds play. That was I don't know how the ref was standing right there and did not. Fam, was he great. was never he was never in bounds that whole like that whole <laughs> he four like seconds. He came off the bench. Yeah, I'm like, he, yo. Took, he took extra steps so you could really see that he was out of bounds. Fam, <laughs> I knew it was out of bounds watching. I'm like, yo, he didn't call that <laughs> before before Curry hit the shot. I'm like, yo, he wasn't Katie just running out of bounds. Yes, I thought the game changed. I thought the NBA rules changed for a minute. I didn't know what was let's, going on. Let's stay on the Warriors for a minute. Do you guys think Draymond Green is overrated now that he's not producing and they're losing? Uh, no. Draymond's not overrated. I wouldn't say he's, overrated. Yeah, he's of one moment. I do think that he's. Uh, if you put him on another team and f- force him to do more without superstars, I think that you know he his stock lowers a lot. He's we're, he's we're, definitely a, a Wes Welker. I think he's a Wes Welker type player. Mm, you put him in okay. that system. I mean, white he's niggas, doing well. White niggas will find a way to incorporate Wes. <laughs> Wes, <laughs> Wes they won. into the talk. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> they won. Have to make sure that's their Jerry Rice. <laughs> yeah. We have athletes too. We have athletes too. <laughs> that's the Yo, white boys. Jerry Rice. will bring up Wes yeah. Walker. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> Wes Walker. Whatever. That's I don't Odell. even know his name. That's the Odell. What's the other one? That is our Odell. It's yeah, another one y'all funny. got. Y'all got a few. They Hogan. They Hogan was the one. They thought Chris no, Hogan what's was the, the dude one? that played for the Patriots? Uh, All the not West, guys. not West Welker. Damian Amendola, uh, Edelman, Edelman, yeah, Edelman is the one of them. Gronk, yeah, there's Edelman. Yeah, uh, but with that said, I think if he goes to a different system, it's a different thing. Like when West Rory went to the Broncos, West. it was over. <laughs> Yeah, it, was, it wasn't No, we it wasn't Rory, a pro want to receiver. run the slot for the win. <laughs> First of all, I did in my flag football uh, tournament. Rory, Thank you very much. Rory, you tell that to your Ducey friends. <laughs> Over here. They you were got, there. You they got, can got vouch. dropped from track school. <laughs> track <laughs> school. <laughs> you, you couldn't even run. What is track school? <laughs> they couldn't even run in track school. <laughs> track school is where they teach you how to track. Track. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh, okay. school oh, you oh, are. My bad. I forgot. Yeah, that's cool. You was definitely in there being predatory in track class. No, I was not. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, in what? track class being predatory? One thousand percent. That's nasty, Rory. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Wait. Time out. No. <laughs> yeah. Stay, yeah. Stay no. away from it. Yeah, please. No. no Glad wh- you thought that. What I'm through. saying is what I'm not saying is <laughs> the track people be having such nice legs that that's the first thing you say is. 
They run track. <laughs> that was a pickup line. At one they point. they wrestle. That's what you. That's they, what you wrestle. Said when you they, they wrestle. <laughs> you'll, never, wait, you'll never see women wait, with wait, nice legs you? and wonder why do you have nice legs? Like yeah, why? Track comes why to are mind, your legs wrestling. so toned and wrestling. defined? Wrestling comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. That's what bad, he was doing at Lincoln topic High School. in our in our DV podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this nigga's crazy. Wait. <laughs> Uh, wait, I got it. Just talk, Rory. No, I wanted to hit the new Joe button on that one, so they were well aware of who that fell on. Exactly, God damn it. No, we're not hitting the new Joe button. We're hitting some Frankie. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. Look at me. Yo, when this shit come on, I feel like I'm dancing like Kid the Wiz or one of them niggas. Kid the <laughs> feel Wiz. like I'm throwing my hat in the air, catching it with my knee. <laughs> hey! Hey, man, at the edge of cubicle, let's hit! Well, the government is shot. You shot. You lost all DJ privileges. The word. Like that, That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you ain't feel hot. Flip the flip the fader. No, no. nigga. You, so the crowd can sing it no. a cappella. Hell no, no nigga. Oh man, we can't hit him at work. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. You wouldn't. That, well, y'all was supposed to say, "You make me happy." No, I'm cool. No, I'm, I'm not happy. That's the problem. Your question, <laughs> y'all, y'all not happy. happy. That's the problem. Question: If you, if you and I could ask you this because you've been in a situation, if you propose to a woman, and she says no, is the relationship automatically over? <laughs> you such a hype beast. <laughs> I saw that question. On yeah, no, that's a great question though. No, it's not I, over. What? Mo, you need you need help. We don't need to talk about what you think. No, <laughs> no, uh, I just said no. Man, nah, y'all tripping. Uh, Did I do some fuck shit? And I'm trying to save my relationship yeah, by on the proposing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what I learned that's is that's what I learned what is saying. that most people that are proposing, right? Like, I, I learned about premarital counseling mm-hmm. and how much of a necessity it is for certain certain couples and certain people. So it's like common practice. Certain people uh, propose and then they go to premarital counseling to make sure they're ready for all their about encounter through marriage. So mm-hmm. you kind of deal with all the shit that was pre-existing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know. Me, me, speaking personally, me and Sin didn't really hit a good stride until we went. We went to see somebody as well. So mm-hmm. I mean, and once we did that, it helped me to better understand her, helped her to better understand me. That clip last night was before we went to see somebody. They're gonna show us seeing somebody, but in watching, I was like, Jesus, how could you not see her point? <laughs> mm-hmm. But you got to get out of your own way so you could see somebody else's point. Um, so that's gonna come. But yeah, I can see it. I don't know, man. I know to you, premarital counseling, I, it, it took me by surprise, too. I was shocked that so many people were, uh, like, that was common practice. I just didn't think that that was common practice. Uh, but the same things, uh, same things that, uh, the same way that most people view therapy, same with premarital counseling. Some people only go to therapy when, when they feel like they need it. Like, they feel like mm. it's not a constant, it doesn't need to be a constant thing. Same, I view premarital counseling the same way. Mm-hmm. In what I've learned in recent months, anyway. I don't know, man. That's tough to that's tough to still be with your your lady if you propose and she says no. I think that's tough. Well, I'm sure she's I saying see no for doing a reason. It. Yeah, I so can see people doing it, but that's tough. Naturally, you would try to figure out what that reason is, because that totally is. changes the relationship after that. Like the relationship is different now. The, the energy is different. No, it's not. No, it's not. If you get, if you I don't propose, think it is. and she Why says no, proposing? but 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 wait, she's ready to spend the rest of your life. Well, with no doubt, no, but that, you should, know. you should have had these discussions maybe with her. Before yeah, if she proposing. said if she said no, things were pre existing. Yeah. Like it, did, it didn't change things. Like when I proposed to uh, Shorty Duop and she said no, it wasn't such a shock. We weren't talking to each other. <laughs> we weren't together. <laughs> there was that some, warrants a no. <laughs> there, there was some production shit in play. Like, that was producer Joe. I don't think she recognized it. Mm. Um, and she had some other grandiose plans about how things would go afterward, and it just didn't play out that way. But so what that, was, she, that was producer Joe <laughs> talking to somebody who they ain't spoke to and moms who they wasn't really fly with. She didn't want to be producer. I was going to say. Yeah, she didn't want to be pr- so, producer. So what, no. they, what they edited out was she said no, and you said 
Let me produce you. <laughs> yeah, she started producing herself. So I'm like, I just don't trust you. I'm like, wait, oh, wait, huh? <laughs> that ain't in my script. <laughs> what, what script are you reading wait, from? Huh? <laughs> wait, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, why are we talking about trust? I ain't spoken to you in months. <laughs> no, I know you don't trust me, man. Go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> why would you trust me? I'm the- <laughs> yeah, been cheating on you for 10 years. Like, you're not supposed to trust me. You down or not? <laughs> are you down or you not? You down or not? All of that is disgusting and toxic masculine. <laughs> Whatever. Which is probably how men kind of view that question in a weird way. Yo, you down or not? How men view what? That question. Will you marry me? Are you down or not? Well, that's why what y'all was talking about earlier with some of the songs that just wouldn't be allowed right now. Like back in the day, it was common practice to see if you could get somebody to come back to the crib. Yeah, really Everything was. about that sounds nasty right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like why are you trying especially, to get her to go to your place? Well, especially because she doesn't know either. She has a home. She don't know you, nigga. She's just trying to club and dance with her girls, get some <laughs> drinks, and fucking call it a night. Head to work. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, nah. creep, nasty ass? <laughs> but that's the other thing about cancel culture, and not not to rewind two hours earlier, but and like. There's no test to take for some of the people to, to to tell if some people are reputable or not. Like, y'all just repping for everybody. Mm. <laughs> and everybody's intentions aren't as pure as, as yours. There's a lot to unpack here. I won't do it now because I'm pussy. <laughs> but. <laughs> Fair. It stands. It stands. Um, What else happened? That we need to talk about. The R. Kelly doc has consumed my entire life for the past week, so I yeah. can't wait till we do our Saturday podcast where we can joke and be immature about things that have happened within the culture. Yeah. Did you guys watch the national championship yesterday since we were on sports? Yeah. You know, is that what we're doing? Taking it to Saban? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At two hours and 11 minutes, I think Saban talk is okay. That wide receiver kid is nice. Uh, Ross? Yeah. Justin Ross is nice. That's all right. I mean, I ain't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't give a fuck. Fair. I saw I saw I saw uh, Vince Young versus Reggie Bush and Matt Liner. So I mean, I was true. What you want me to do? Amazing. Yeah. Best game of my life. Like I don't care what Nick Saban's doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, like getting his ass whooped. Yeah, not much. He's great. He keeps winning. Clemson is here. They got his ass out of here. Same record. Same amount of national championships within the last four years. Like I, I understand. I know we we couldn't uh, view anybody as uh, a dynasty outside Alabama and Saban, but yeah, Clemson's here. Yeah. Clemson's here, and they let us know they were here with the Shook Knight tribute. <laughs> I liked it. I miss that. They said, uh, "Hey, if you are," uh, they said, uh, "Hey, if you were rec- recruit out there, you tired of the coaches all in the locker room?" <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> they said that before the game, right? After, after the game, okay. after they, after they yeah. won, not oh, before. Okay. Uh, tired of the coaches all in. They come over here and whatever they said. It was like <laughs> that was funny. dope. That was dope. Well, that kid, the wide receiver kid, is from Alabama. Mm. The state of Alabama. Got it, got it, got it. They lost that one. He's nice. He's nice. He's nice, yeah. He's nice. And that Clemson uh, true freshman quarterback is real nice. Yeah. Yeah, Lawrence. Well, they Ross is a true freshman as well, right? Yeah. yeah oh, they're, yeah. They're they're tell, tell me about this fucking Tua kid. And then he get out there and stink it up. <laughs> I don't think he stunk it up. I didn't no, think did. it was to the degree that they spoke spoke of him. He shouldn't have got outdone by the, by the true freshman. Yeah. Well. I feel like there was another big happening in sports that we needed to. This, oh, uh, give me your give me your Super Bowl picks. I mean, not Super Bowl, but the playoff picks. Uh, you were Chargers. high. You were high on slow down. You were yeah. high on the Ravens. You I were was, high well, on Lamar Jackson. You thought the rookie would go out there in the bright lights of playoff action and atmosphere and perform. I did. He had been doing it for weeks. Cracked his they, fucking muff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was with Parks, too. I thought hey, he was going to be hey, out in the playoffs. Hey, you running quarterbacks. Yeah. It's the playoffs, dogs. I mean, that's true. And the Chargers, I think, are legit. But the Chargers have also fumbled the ball in the playoffs a million times. So I was, like, on the fence with them. But they look they look good this year. Colts balled out. Colts look all right. Colts look real good. More dangerous see. than I thought going into the playoffs. Yeah. Well, no, they look real good. Towards the end of the season. And Granted, sport- it was Houston, but I still didn't think they was going to get busy. I thought Houston being at home and having more weapons would have came out in that game. but Because that me, game was different than that wait, score. Wait, let me interrupt before you guys get a, a vibe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, sports people out there, I know you guys hate when we talk about uh, sports because we don't know anything about sports. But Facts. That's not going to stop us from talking about <laughs> shit that we don't know anything about. So, all right, you guys go ahead. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I got Chargers, Chiefs, and Saints... 
and the Rams. Yeah. All favorites, I think. I was going to say it's a yeah. safe, safe yeah. four. Well, no, the, the Chargers aren't really a favorite against the Patriots. That's going to be a good game. It is going to be yeah. a good game. Actually, I like all the games this weekend. Me too. And all the wild card games are great. Hey, when I can't talk shit to Cowboy fans. <laughs> I had them winning that game, though. I wasn't sure. That was a pick for me. Their defense is elite. At home? Anywhere. Shit. All right. Watch this week. Tell we'll me, see. Tell me if it's elite this week. I bet it's not a high-scoring game. Oh, no, it's playoffs. I don't think it will be. Yeah. I don't think it will be. I think that uh, I saw some tweets saying, hey, girly, get ready for the hot boys. <laughs> uh, is that what they're called? I, I, I didn't know that. I wouldn't be shocked if Dallas I, won that game. And I'm not a Dallas fan, so, I mean, if that's their name, I don't want to be disrespectful, but... Uh, newsflash out there In my humble opinion I think Gurley's ready For the hot boys <laughs> Yeah well I don't know man I, I think Gurley's coming I think the hot boys Should be Yo, just as linebacker. equally prepared Dallas, Dallas linebackers are This nice. is getting nasty <laughs> They should be ready for Gurley Gurley and the hot boys They will be Their linebackers are nice That rookie kid Roy's an idiot <laughs> Listen I'm just trying To stay PC on here You're toxic That's toxic And the second they come for us You're the first uh, uh, You're my first expenditure <laughs> wow. <laughs> Noted. Don't touch me. Expenditure. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> you're don't my, touch me. You're the first expenditure. <laughs> it's always fucked up because Maul don't even be paying no attention to the podcast. He'd be on his phone and he just laugh at something. Get out of here. <laughs> that was talking about like, NFL, out here, nigga. nigga. I don't, you know, I don't know nothing about the fuck y'all talking about. Um, is there anything coming up this weekend or, or shit that we need to be aware of? Uh, outside of the playoffs or whatever we were talking about, anything like really important happening? I tried to pay. I tried to pay the government tax money, and they told me that they were closed. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, they'll be. I found so much irony in that. <laughs> I, I found I got such a laugh out of me actually trying to pay some shit that I didn't want to pay, and then them saying, "No, not right now." <laughs> They'll be busy Talk about God teaching you Just some resilience And patience And willpower <laughs> Like Now you gotta put money To the side And just Wait Leave it <laughs> That is so trash <laughs> <laughs> Yep that yeah, really, Or you can spend it in a day. Oh, They'll yeah. get it No 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 no. They'll no, get it one way or another No no, no they're gonna get it Yeah they'll get it they, 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 I know I, I saw the Wesley Snipes deal <laughs> they'll, they'll get it <laughs> They got him Didn't care about Blade Yeah no <laughs> <laughs> At all Any of them um. Well, the rest of the blades were trash. <laughs> do we? Uh, do we think J Cole listened to our podcast? Oh my God, Rory! Hmm. Now that you said that, let's talk about it. I'm afraid. Why? Well, J Cole put up a picture of him and Take Heath, <laughs> which is from, uh, and it looked like they were listening. Well, this is to for like podcast. his um, <laughs> dream compilation. It looked like they were listening to the podcast, and, and, and then I humbly <laughs> thought about everything that I said about J. Cole. See, you know, that's the thing that consumers will never get. And I, I tried, I tried, in this. I tried to talk about it here. It's just different when rappers are talking to, to and about rappers. It's very different. It's different from the rappers that y'all like to hear on the song, and then rappers having to actually go in the studio and record with that rapper. It's different pressure. <laughs> Could get tense. Don't get the wrong rapper angry at you. Uh, some rappers you got to be on your fucking A plus game to step in the studio with. Mm -hmm. And if I'm just looking at J Cole's picture with Tay Keith, <laughs> I was scared. <laughs> some smoke might be coming your way. R C. God damn it! <laughs> no, I'm whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm expendable. I'm expendable. Uh, I didn't say don't <laughs> do that. Don't do that, Rory. Yeah, I'm, I'm expendable, Charlemagne. Uh, I'm expendable. Yeah, oh, <laughs> Rory, come on. I'm not Talk expending you yet. I'm not expending you. <laughs> I'm not gonna expend you. Talk your shit, Rory. Now he nah, wants. Now he want to be in it together, yeah, right? Now it's our. Yeah. Yo, Cole. Thirty seconds ago, it wasn't. Cole <laughs> was in the picture with Tay Keith, and he didn't have a shape up. Mm -hmm. They were staring at a monitor. Mm. And they were I felt like I just needed to peruse my brain to make sure that I didn't say anything that could affect him in a negative light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can see why you would do that. I can see why you would do that. And on top of that. <laughs> on top of that. Because cause Cole is from the home school where they heard you. Yeah. And they're going to tell you they heard you. It's not going to acknowledge you because you're a bum. Yeah. <laughs> so, but they're going to make sure you know that Cole, they heard it. Yeah. Cole, Jermaine. <laughs> Jermaine. <laughs> Maine. Yeah, Maine. 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 Maino. <laughs> Maino. Maine. Yeah. Maino. Maino. Hey, Cole, man, I was bugging out. 
Yeah. <laughs> you talking shit, doing what I do. I mean, doing what I do. Ain't no yo, harm in that. Yo, ain't no man, it's getting a couple jokes. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let them jokes off. You're keep, not sensitive. Keeping it light. Yeah. I mean, for the culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the yeah culture. You know what I mean? Wow. You ain't got to address me with yeah. Tay Keith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm already scared of Tay Keith. <laughs> I'm scared of everybody on the low. I don't know why I talk so aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking take you shit. Hold up, man. Oh Burn. my god, man, that's some funny oh. shit. Man. Well, no, what's scarier too is he's also around a bunch of other rappers in there too, yeah. who are also feeding his competitive nature of getting you the fuck out of here. He's sitting next to Crit. He's sitting next to Reason. He's sitting next to JID. He's sitting next to Cause. Like, there's people that rap words together next to him yeah. during all of this. You're in trouble, Joe. <laughs> I want to tell you my psychology and why I'm afraid of Tate Keith. You hear this beat? Again, I get into the psychology record. <laughs> Do y'all hear this beat? Y'all not from Memphis, right? Y'all not from, like, down there? Mm -mm. So this shouldn't hit y'all a certain way. And when I first heard this song, I hated this song. And I hated the song because it was such a simple song. It was just like a bass line and a beat and a doom, 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 doom. And that's why I'm scared of Tate Keith. Because... Why would you make this and just know that we will jam to it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This simple ass shit, you made it and said, hit. Y'all will dance. <laughs> and Cle we did. Clearly you know me better than I do. <laughs> I thought I hated this song. <laughs> nope. Body. <laughs> That's the Undertaker. Uh, no, don't tell yeah. me body's about to drop. I want to stand up. Mm -hmm. I want to be alert and alive. Uh, I was happy to see that picture. I'm not gonna lie. Cole, uh, that should be cool. They're giving themselves ten days to make. That Cole project. is not about to play with Rory and Parks for the things that they say. <laughs> the disrespect of the Dreamville Nation. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want to call me defending him against you, we can roll with that. <laughs> that is what I want to call you. <laughs> defending him against me. I'm 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 excited for it. Me I'm, too. I want to hear this. Yo, why y'all not scared? I don't yeah. rap. This is the fuck I'm scared. Yes, you do. Rap. You, you writing rap. with Griselda. I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not writing with Griselda. So why they tell me that? <laughs> Nobody told you that, nigga. Oh. <laughs> Nobody they told, told you that. So they told me you had some shit. I would add some shit. Now, yeah, I would say no. Mo doesn't have some shit. <laughs> How would you first start? I don't know, Joe. About not being wifed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ten years in the game ain't wife nothing. <laughs> that's, that's a trash. That's, 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 that's a trash. Look at the bar he gave me. <laughs> you can't rap no more, Joe. I'm convinced. <laughs> I thought he still has some bars. Well, him and well, Mano no, I was about to say, coming. Mano said that he's not really retired, retired. That's Mano true. is so fucking stupid, man. <laughs> stupid ass Mano. I'm talking about, hey, Joe, come take a pick by the board. I'm talking about, all right, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tuck my scarf in first. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't see that coming from <laughs> a mouth. Tuck my scarf away. into my hoodie. <laughs> Yo, but I want to be trash. Do I don't want to rap. Nah, I'm, you not, I'm not looking You don't want to rap, but you don't want to be trash, though. Well, I don't. I don't think it's humanly possible for me to be trash. Yeah. Like, but let's let's be clear. Yeah, you don't want to be trash. I, I, I think that most of my uh, ex peers acknowledge what I'm capable of if I get angry. Agreed. Outside of that, uh, in retirement, part of the great thing about retirement is I'm trying not to get angry. Like, <laughs> I don't want to rap. I don't want to think about raps. I don't want to hear nothing that's going to inspire me to rap. I don't want to you rapper niggas that's real nice at rap to rap at me so to make me want to rap. Like, I'm just like, chill out. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. everything, this is just, all that rap shit was just therapy, therapeutic shit. I'm just trying to be happy. Wait till January trying to cool out. 16th when that Take Keith drop drops and it's mm. Cole tearing you up on the intro. Wait, that's when it's dropping? What? Wait, who you got, me and you or Cole and J.I.D.? You got them versus us? No, I'm definitely taking us in Come that. on, man. <laughs> yeah, what, what you want to do, Jid? <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, got red over here. Oh, wait, who said yeah, all right? See, <laughs> all right. Who said yeah, all right? <laughs> Yo, who said yeah, all right? 
<laughs> Which one of y'all niggas? One said little that? small fucking connotation to <laughs> start the biggest rap beef ever. Joe, Don't say yeah, I right, to me. You can't rap in a turtleneck. I kind of felt a little way to hove when he was saying so what, but it's hove. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was funny. He ain't the nigga that you could come out of retirement and diss. Like you got to chill. You got to go brush it up. Yo. Oh yeah, you can't. <laughs> but he come out said the gate. he said like he said so what to me like five times. I was helpless standing there like yo, <laughs> fam. The rapper in me don't let other niggas say this to me yeah, but man. let's have a good time yeah. <laughs> that was some funny shit hey hey, yeah. hey do say let's just enjoy the moment yeah. um i don't think anything else happened this week the spice awards the, the r kelly doc the, the joe fucking announced the joe whatever dressing his fucking dirty past like what, what do you want me to do dirty past. <laughs> it's dirty dirty past. Turtle, man. i hope i was able to use my plight as a teachable moment to young men out there man uh don't tweet shit when you're breaking up with people. Yeah. That's good advice. Uh, don't tweet shit uh, or use your, your socials to hurt other people. Yeah. Um, make sure you're always representing yourself in the best light possible. Um, make sure your words and your actions and your behaviors are always aligned uh, and in unison. Um... And just make sure you always represent yourself the best way you would like to. I know for a long time, a lot of us said, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I was the chairman of that fucking phrase. But that's why that's why age is great. And that's why uh, maturation is great. Because as you get older, uh, you care about more and you are afraid of a lot more. Very different from going outside when you were a kid without house keys, a phone, and money. Today, I'm scared of mad things. <laughs> I'm frightened. I'm horrified out here. I'm just trying to live. <laughs> Fair. Uh, as we all are, man. Shout out to everybody out there just trying to get by. Shout out to everybody out there starting positive movements to uh, positively affect the community. Um, shout out to people that are continuing these conversations past documentaries and, and past just social media uh, shit. Just shout out to everybody that's invested uh, it does feel good. It's good that we're in a different time. It's good that we can have these conversations. It's good that we can challenge one another. It, it's all good. Everything happening right this second is good. Uh, and hopefully our work today leads to a better tomorrow. All our forefathers and ancestors could have ever asked for. Uh, that's my piece on that. If you are looking to cancel Joe Budden at the end of this podcast as a result of something you heard, guess what? You reserve that right. You reserve the right to do so. Uh, but hopefully I was able to add a little more information. And if you heard me properly, hopefully you wouldn't believe the same way I don't believe that some of that stuff was out there. Hopefully you wouldn't believe that that, that, that that's how I'm moving out here. It's just not the case. Not what's happening. And let's be responsible with uh, our power, our agenda, uh, our peers, there. Was that well said? Did I get us in trouble? No, no I, think, you think? I think we're okay. If they cancel me, they cancel y'all, so protect me. Ain't nobody's <laughs> getting canceled, man. All right, good, 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 good. good. Well, somebody's getting canceled. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are getting canceled. Nobody on this platform. Yes, 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 yes. yes. There we go. Let me hit the ear horn for that one. Uh, anything we're leaving out? Uh, Rory? We're leaving out Rory. And I looked to say Vaughn to see if there was something. He's not even there. He's, mm, he's just left. He went just on. running amok. <laughs> amok. <laughs> We're running amok. Oh, I think that was everything for the week, man. Uh, if this is your first time tuning into this podcast, I promise you we're not normally this serious or mature. Or Don't worry, we'll be back this weekend. Or, yeah, we'll, we'll be back. We'll, we'll have fun this weekend. We'll be back. We'll have a good time. Uh, I hope it snows this weekend. Sunday. Snows. A lot. Mm. Not, not a, not, not what you like. <laughs> you, uh, you, oh. you want, you don't want to see your fucking backyard. I don't want to see anything. Yeah, no, I don't see people. I don't like want to see the yard. I just want to be home and watch that channel ID. I dig it. Winter and, shit. Until the next time, please, please, please keep us in your prayers. Lord knows we need to be there. Until the next time, I bid you adieu. Bye bye. <laughs>